Okay, so I am live now. Um, it's one thirty. No, sorry, 2.30 in the afternoon here in Bangkok. And uh, not really a lot to talk about because I don't think there's anybody in the stream. Oh, we've got one person in the stream. Hi, Huggy Bear. How are you doing? Just winding up my, uh, resetting my fake Rolex here. Uh, Hobson's Choice. Hope you had a nice birthday, Peter. It's damn hot in Bangkok, Bangkok, isn't it? Hope to see you soon for a chat. Yeah, are you, you're in Bangkok. You probably wrote to me and told me. Uh, I'm like a dinosaur, right? My watch is done. Um, yeah, it's really, 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 really hot today. And uh, I've got two reasons not to go out today. And I'll tell you in a minute. So we've got about 30 people in, pe people coming into the stream now. And uh, I don't think we're going to have a lot of people from the UK because it's very, very early there. I believe it's about 6.30 in the morning. Well, let's count it down. 2.30, 1, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8.30 in the morning in the UK. But that's fine. It, it's good to do a live stream at different times because it gives me the opportunity to see uh, people from which countries can actually come in live at this time. Uh, so I'll just say hi to a few people. Then I'll tell you the two reasons why I'm not going out today. Definitely not going out at all. Uh, so yeah, Hobbs's choice. Good to see you. So you're in Bangkok. Let me know. Uh, are you around? Are you around the Nana area or anywhere? Where are you staying? Chris, glad you're here, Chris. I think you're the only moderator in today. And uh, it's up to you. Hey, Dick's enormous. You not play water, Peter. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm not going out today. Simon Yee. Hi, happy birthday, Songkran. How come you are home? Okay. It all will become clear very, very soon. Uh, Graham Truban, uh, Sabai, Sadabai, how are you doing, Graham? Uh, Joel Brooks, I'm going to Bangkok on the 26th for a week. Well, warning, Joel, it's a lot of fun here, but it is hot. It's about 40 degrees today, and uh, they're predicting heat waves. Let me just get something up on my phone, and I'll show you that, it's, uh, that they are actually predicting these uh, heat waves. Hopefully, it's still there uh i'm i'm on their uh, iq air yeah so you see the airs i mean that's pretty good for bangkok it's normally about 150 195 but you can see above that it says there is a heat wave taking place in thailand tell me about it it is hot um okay yeah you'll have a good time anyway uh, joel just uh you know you're, you're gonna have to hit that air condition sometimes it's up to you hello from uh UK. Okay, so you're, you're up early. You're going to work. You've got the day off today. What are you up to? Uh, Hobson's Choice. Yes, uh, you've been busy with Marley. Uh, let's put that up there. What does that say? Yes, you've been busy. Will Marley and you again soon? I went walk early uh, then out after five. Yeah, I think I believe I'm going to be doing a video with Marley after the weekend. Let's get this song crown out of the way. It finishes here on Monday. And then uh, the video I want to do with her, we want to go up to the Dong Wong Airport and just show everybody how to get into town by... Uh, using the train system skytrain uh, bts and all the rest of it uh, that she's been really busy and i i've, I've been away last week um went down to Coal Summit, had a brilliant time it is so busy down there now i've been to Coal Summit three times since i've uh, moved back out here in the last 18 months once was about a year ago the second time was in october november when my daughters were here i took them onto the island and i've just obviously come back it was my birthday last week and uh, it just wasn't the same it's still beautiful beaches warm clear water i swam for a couple of hours you know say swam bobbed up and down in the pool and um in the in the sea rather uh, it's just it's just coach loads and coach loads and coach loads of chinese i mean it was really mobbed the, the hotel that I stay in, uh, I stay in the Diamond Beach Hotel, which has got a really nice piece of beach and uh, the bungalows, basically. Like, I don't know what you call them in America. Uh, they're individual kind of one-story little houses. And um, I took one of those. I was upgraded for free, actually, because I did a YouTube video there a few months ago. So they upgraded me. And uh, we had, I had a nice time there, you know. But the thing is, it's just... It's just crowded, really, really crowded. And I use the government boat to get in on and off the island because the speedboat's about 300 baht return. But I, I feel a bit sick on the speedboat. You share it with others. But the government boat is 120 baht each way, and it goes about five times a day, and it chugs along. It's about 45 minutes, and I prefer that. Uh, but it was just – it was so full, the boat. I thought the thing was going to sink. You know, it wasn't going to sink. It's just me. Um, but, yeah, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Chinese – 
tour groups on there and it was so busy it was the first time i actually seen many of the uh, there's many motorcycle scooters that you can rent there they pushed the price up to 400 baht a day i managed to get one for 300 baht for the single day that i used it but i seen several outlets that had no motorbikes and i said to them you know where, where are your motorbikes and they said they're all rented out so yeah they're happy with the business i guess but it's it's very busy uh d and e san how you doing um Hobbs's Choice, I'm 30 minutes away from Nana BTS. So you must be either out by Bangna, Bangwa, somewhere like that. Um, right, Andy Davis, not, it's 9.30 in the UK, of course, because the clocks went uh, forward, didn't they, an hour in March. Uh, it's up to you, 41 in Chiang Mai this week. They're predicting 45. You know, I'm not going to whinge about the weather because people will start saying, well, what, what are you doing in Thailand? But, you know, I mean, I like warm weather, but it's just... You know, every time you go out for 10 minutes, you have to have a shower and a change of clothes. You know, I mean, this, I was going to wear the old wife beat invest today, but, you know, every time I do, I get so much stick from people. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll put a half, a half decent t-shirt on. It's really like thin. It's not nylon. I don't know what the material's called, but it's, it's quite cool. Not cool to look at, but cool to wear. And uh, I had the windows open. I was going to leave the windows open, but it's just, it's just too hot. Um, Okay, so it's up to you, 41 in Chiang Mai, you just said, yeah. Uh, per, I don't know if I can pronounce this, Per Brengnesdal, I probably just slaughtered your name, sorry, but hi from Denmark. Anyway, good to have you in the stream. Uh, and it, up to you says, uh, let me just highlight, uh, day off. Okay, it's your day off today, that's good. Right, so why am I not out in the Songkran Festival splashing water about with everybody else? The first time I did it, was in 1993, 1992 or 93. I was, tw uh, I was 32 or I was 33 years old, and I used to love it. Really used to love it, and I've done it many times, at least 15 times, 20 times over the last 30 years. And what, what, what in the early days, what I used to do was go down to Pat Pong because Pat Pong was like the place to be back then. Nana Plaza was just kind of transitioning from a shopping centre to what it is today. Uh, you know, there were a few bars coming into Nana Plaza, but there's still you know, there was still a um, a restaurant, a Lebanese restaurant there, a gold shop. Uh, there was a travel agent. So it was, it was, it originally was the Nana Plaza shopping center. It wasn't what it is today. It wasn't covered over or anything like that. So the main place to be, but to go and um, mess about with Songkran. If you don't know what Songkran is, it's it's basically the Thai New Year. Uh, everything's closed down for three days. Luckily in Bangkok, it only happens for three days. It starts Saturday, Sunday, Monday, then Tuesday. It's back to normal. However, saying that, uh, I went out last night about seven o'clock and a couple of the bars were, they were, had water pistols and they were spraying. Luckily, I didn't get caught. So I used to go down to Pat Pong and, you know, I had my favorite bars there. There were outside bars and they used to get a, a big barrel of water, one of these big plastic tubs. I don't know how many liters it is. And we'd all get these electric, uh, they look like machine guns. Obviously, they're water pistols and you dip the, the end of the water pistol into the into the tub of water, press a button, it's batteries obviously, and it sucked up two litres of water, and these things would fire probably, I don't know, 20, 20 feet, you know, and get some poor suspecting tourist who, who's, you know, wearing a nice shirt and uh, a nice shirt and trousers, they don't know nothing about Songkran, you know, and you give them a quick squirt, <laughs> but they soon get into it. But no, seriously, I, I used to really enjoy it, I used to really enjoy it. Um, I remember one time when I was in the hotel trade, I had to go from Ceylon to, I think it was Siam Square. And I, and I just, for some reason, I, I went in a tuk-tuk, you know, and I was wearing a, like a suit, but I'd taken the jacket off, loosened the tie, and I was in the back of this tuk-tuk, and I was going to see my my boss in another hotel. And we come to, to some traffic lights, and there was a bunch of people on the corner with buckets full of water and one of them was holding them at the traffic waiting for the lights and i was coming up and i was like please don't go red please don't go red please don't go red what happened it went red they absolutely drenched me so you can't really go anywhere without getting wet the water isn't cold but some of the places they they ice the water up so it's very cold but i used to really enjoy it i used to go and participate in it buy the electric water pistols and I'd be there with the girls at the bars, you know, spraying around it, It'd go on all afternoon. It was a, it was a good time. And I did that for many, many years when I was in the hotel industry, I did it with staff and it was great, but you know what? I've just turned 64 last year. I didn't get involved with it and I'm not getting involved in it this year for a few reasons. Firstly, every YouTuber in Thailand, I can guarantee you with the exception of a few that I can count on my right hand. And I know who they are because they didn't do it last year. Coffee. 
But every, they'll all be out there with their cameras, their gold, waterproof GoPros, and they'll all be chucking water and getting white powder on the face. And you're only, you look tomorrow, maybe even today, and there'll probably be a hundred videos. So I, I haven't got anything to add to that. You know, I'm, I, I'm not going to do anything different. The other thing is I just don't enjoy it anymore. You know, I, I did it. It was fun at the time. I've grown. I'm 64 now. And, you know, I, I haven't turned into a, a boring person. I hope not anyway. But just it just doesn't do anything. And I can't really go anywhere, you know, because it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere you go, every street, especially around the Nana area. You know, I can't go to the end of my street. I'll be so. So if you want to go to a shopping mall, and you get soaked, it's air conditioning, air conditioning, then it's very, very cold once the water's on you, you know, so as boring as it might sound, for today, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday, I'll be working on YouTube, I'll be concentrating on videos, and editing, and everything, we've got a great pool on the roof there, so I'll use that for a bit of exercise, I've fully stocked up with food and beer, and uh, that's the reason I'm not participating in this year's song crown festivals okay i know it might say it might come across as a bit boring for some people but it's just i've done it i've been there and uh you know <laughs> not again not this year uh right okay let's see we've got 80 in now that's not bad for a for an ad hoc stream we've been running about just 11 minutes um okay where what was the last one uh yeah I'm still going to call you George because I can pronounce that. Uh, how are you doing? Good to see you in the stream. Uh, Toby Price, thunder, lightning, and rain rain in North Chombury today. Really? Hmm. I, when I was down on the island, beautiful weather like it is here, um, the, the, the pollution level, I think they call it PI, is it? Something like that. It was four, the number four. Whereas in Bangkok, you're lucky if it gets down to kind of 70. That's a really good day. I've seen it where it's it's you know, just under the 200 mark, like 198, uh, you know, and you go, I go out to the park and walk and stuff and it does bother me a little bit because I'm thinking, am I going to get cancer from all this pollution? But it was great down there on the island. But um, just what you're saying there about the thunder and lightning, let's put that up there. So um, I put a short up on YouTube. I was this kind of bungalow that I, that was staying in the hotel, like a, I don't know, the Americans, what do you call them? Any Americans in a single story house? Um, it had a nice veranda, and about nine o'clock at night, I just seen the windows, you know, uh, lightning going, and the rain torrential went out and filmed about a, a minute of it for YouTube. And uh, but I haven't seen anything in Bangkok yet. But the rainy season's on its way; it won't be long. And uh, you'd like to think when the rain comes, it will clear all the pollution. I certainly hope so. Um, the rain—I don't mind the rainy season because you, when it rains here, it doesn't kind of tend to rain all day and all night. It, it will go some days are longer than others but sometimes it'll go for an hour then that's it and it never seems to rain twice so if it rains in the afternoon from four to six usually that's it you know um and the other thing is you know we wear these plastic you must have seen the ties they wear these plastic one piece uh, kind of uh, you slide them over your heads like the old duffel coats we had in the uk but they're plastic but and they keep you really dry but the only problem is with them because this is a hot humid country they they tend to be quite small these plastic um jackets as well coats and so they're quite tight on farangs and of course it's hot so you start sweating that's the only problem but they do keep you dry mm. right okay um okay uh I'm not sure what you mean there. Hobson's Choice, you said email, not Marley. Okay, let me go back and see if I can find that because I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, okay, yes, you've been busy with Marley. You again soon. I went walk early, then over five. Okay, so I'm, I'm not really sure on that one. Um, uh, it's up to you. Well, working on my house. Okay, yeah. Uh, Toby Price, oh, I've just done that. Right, Joe, Joe Brooks, there we go. Uh, I'm staying in an Airbnb, have to meet host, and he takes me into the condo, all done a little secret. I'll tell you the reason for that. Uh, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that it is illegal to rent out Airbnbs in Thailand now because there was a lot of complaints. Um, and if it's not illegal, it might be part of the terms of your lease. And I've heard this so many times where people are uh, uh, renting Airbnbs here and they're told don't tell any they're told by the person who owns the apartment or whatever don't tell anybody you're staying in, in, in it's an Airbnb and they meet them and it's all ducking and diving and uh, and the reason for that is because there's been a lot of problems in the past so what happens you have a residential block of apartments like I live in here 
I've got a nice 50 square meter apartment, okay? All nice neighbors, everybody's quiet. You hear the occasional movement of a chair or something. But what happens with Airbnb, you tend to get, um, not all the time, because uh, you, I don't know how old you are, you look about 50, something like that, uh, from the small picture. Uh, you, you will get, from time to time, if you've got an Airbnb, you'll get you know two or three younger people, guys or girls, who may be in their late 20s, and because it's an Airbnb, they don't care about their neighbors. They don't care about noise. And I, and I know here there was an Airbnb at one time. Somebody told me that there was a group used to go up to the pool on the roof, which is really quiet up there. It's very, very quiet. You're lucky if you see one other person doing lengths or reading a book on a, on a, on a lounger. And these guys were up there and they were drinking beer and they had music on quite loud, which was disturbing people. And of course, when they come, if they go out to somewhere like Soy Cowboy and they come back at three in the morning, they're in the party mood because they're on holiday, right? So they whack the music up and, you know, there's people above them, below them and around each side who, you know, ties as well, who have to get up for work six, seven o'clock in the morning. They don't appreciate it. So what you'll find if you rent an Airbnb here, it's all very, very secretive cloak and dagger because they can get themselves in quite a bit of trouble um, if they're if they're renting as an Airbnb. And it, it's so obvious. I'm sure there's one Airbnb in this apartment because sometimes I'll go out to get my scooter or whatever, which is parked obviously in the, the downstairs um, in the basement here not the basement, the ground level, and you'll see somebody waiting outside. The security is very good here. We've got two security guards on duty all the time, and it's all CCTV'd up. And um, sometimes, and I've seen this more than three or four times, there'll be a guy on his own or a man and a woman, and they're outside with suitcases, and they're just waiting. Or they're in. there's a wooden bench just inside where the security box is downstairs, and they're sitting there with cases. And then somebody will turn up and they'll all rush into the lift and away they go. And I never, after a week or so, I never see them again. So I'm sure there's an Airbnb here somewhere, but luckily it's not on my floor. I've never heard anything. Okay. And if you've just joined us, uh, welcome to this ad hoc live stream. There's 100 in now, 102. And uh, uh, just very, very quickly, I'll repeat. Uh, Song Cram Festival right now. I'm not going to take part in it this year. Been doing it for years and uh, I'm just not into it anymore. And um, it's very, very hot today. So I thought, uh, I was doing some, I'm learning how to use Google Studio at, Studio at the moment, and uh, I thought I'll take a break and do a live stream and just, uh, it will give people who want to watch who are uh, not normally around in the evenings when I do them, it'll give them a chance to, to get involved in the chat, so uh, good to see the uh, more people coming in as I'm here now, and I've got no green screen up either, so what you see behind me is what you normally see behind me. The difference is I have a green screen and I'll put a nice picture on. I'll, t I'll just show you what happens if you don't have a green screen. So I'll put a, a virtual background on of something I normally put on. So um, you can still do it, but there, there's a background there. Okay. So there's a background, but I haven't got a green screen. And you'll see when I move about, you know, you can see that haze around me. And when I put my hands there, look, see that? That's because there's no green screen there. So let's get rid of that because that looks horrible. Um, let's get rid of that. You can even blur the background. Look, just have it as a blur, but you know, it's not very interesting, is it? And on my bed behind me, it's not very interesting, but <laughs> better than a blurred screen. Uh, right, okay. Um, going off track here. Uh, Muhammad, is that real, your real name? Muhammad Wang Sawadi Pimai. I hope, uh, I hope you all get wet. Okay, I ain't getting wet. I nearly got it this morning. Uh, Hobson's Choice, uh, girlfriend moaning that's too hot. Yeah, look, absolutely. You know it's hot here when Ty's moaning about it. I know I've got a friend who lives across a, in a street across on the other side of Sucking Bit, and his girlfriend, obviously Ty, and she won't go out in the afternoon. She said it's just too hot. And it's not about their skin going brown because they, they have umbrellas, you know, uh, to stop the sun turning them brown. Um, Dr. Diff, looks like uh, microfiber. Is that the shirt? I don't know. I wish I had a few more because they're – really light I, I thought it was nylon but it, nylon you'd be sweating cobs wouldn't you um right dean easton i totally agree peter it's hot uh i went out earlier and five minutes and i was drenched and not by those celebrating song cran that you know sometimes people ask me what i miss about the uk and i don't slate the uk that i've seen guys on tiktok and um youtube and they're like yeah i mean i do say i don't miss the uk of course there's some things i do miss but there's guys who go out of their way they're out here full time there's one younger guy i won't mention in particular and and they just you know they they just say so many bad things about the uk i know it's not perfect and we have our problems and things and it's not a nice place to live compared to here but at the end of the day you know we've got the nhs yes you go on long waiting lists and 
you know, it's it can be tedious, but you will get treated. And, you know, if you're found in the street, uh, an ambulance will take you to hospital. It's all it's all uh, done. You don't have to get your wallet out. It's all paid by tax. Um, you know, a lot of problems there at the moment, as there is in other Western countries. But I, I don't go out of my way to slate the UK. Um, but one thing I do miss, I'll tell you a couple of things I miss. But before I do, let me just say thank you very much to... Um, Kevin, <laughs> amazing, Kevin. You get you do that every time. I didn't think you'd be around today. Good afternoon, Peter. Kevin from Australia. Hope you're keeping well, mate. Have a drink on me. Well, I'm actually having a coffee at the moment because it's only five to three, ten to three in the afternoon. So cheers, Kevin. Thank you for that. Very generous. I've given up sweetener as well. You know, I'm on this diet. I'll tell you about that later as well. Cheers, Kevin. Um, right. Uh, I'll put that back up there. So... One of the things I miss about, there's a few things I miss about the UK, but one one thing I really miss, I don't miss the rain and the sleet and the snow and, you know, those horrible grey days where you get up at six in the morning and you can hear the hailstones on the window and you've got to go out in it. You know, I don't miss any of that. But what, what I do miss about the UK is those, uh, we have a lot of them, not hot weather, but you have a lot of weeks where it's not raining. It's, uh, it can be cold, but it's, the air where I where I was living in a place called Kettering in Northamptonshire, the air is very fresh. You know, very it's really great if you like walking. I used to enjoy walking my dog three to five miles a day. And if you're a walker, the air in the UK around that part of the country is so fresh. You know, and you almost you know, as Arthur Daly said in Mind Minder, it's a shame we can't bottle it, but it's really good. So I miss those walks with a dog and that fresh air. And every now and again, you'll get the smell of somebody cutting grass or. Uh, a wood burner, you know, you just get a whiff, a, a slight smell of that wood burning. I miss all that kind of thing, but that's the UK, right? Um, but other than that, food-wise, you can pretty much get everything out here. I can't think of any food that they've got in the UK that you can't get here. You can get it. It might not be the same brand, but you can get everything here now. It's not like 20 years ago where you had to hunt stuff down and get parcels sent out to you. Uh, so, yeah, there's no, there isn't a, a much else. Um Anyway, right, okay, moving on, moving on. Uh, Pat Ty, happy song, Grand Handsome Man Pete. Okay, I'll put that up. Thank you, Pat, very kind of you. Um, okay, Joe says, the place the place I am staying in is Ket Hua Quang. I hope I pronounced that properly. Okay, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I was going to say I'm not sure it is. I'll tell you the truth, Joe. I haven't got a bloody clue where it is. I don't know where it is at all. Um I did a. I've just released a video to members today, and I'll, it'll be, I'll be releasing it to everybody else on Tuesday. So I didn't know this because I've got a car and I've got a scooter. Um, if you've seen the video, apologies. I'll, I'll make it quick. But I didn't know that if you buy, if you're over sixty, and I know a lot of my viewers are kind of over. They are over sixty. There's a lot of guys. Uh, I get um, stats in the back of YouTube, and it tells me how old people are. My biggest audience is between kind of 50 and 65, right? Um, I do get younger and older. But uh, if you're over 60, do you know if you use the MRT system here, do you know you get an elderly discount, you get a seniors discount, a 50% discount? I've just done the video. Um, you've got to tell them. You've got to show them ID, your passport, for instance, or a photo uh, graph but you go down to one of the stations and you buy 500 baht or say 200 300 baht on a and you ask for this seniors card you actually get 600 baht of credit so if the journey is 40 baht it only charges you 20 baht it's great isn't it uh, and the same thing with the bts you can get a rabbit card you just show your um your passport but the, the problem is uh, the bts one only uh, lasts for seven years but the mrt only lasts for two years so the problem being if you're one of those guys who comes back twice a year then the BTS card is great because you can use it for seven years. It won't expire. You know, you just got to remember on the seventh year. Um, and the other thing I'd said on there as well is, you know, if you are over 60 and you start visiting um, tourist attractions, temples, uh, palaces, uh, the caves or, you know, parks or national parks, there's always a two-tier pricing system, isn't there? You pay more for foreigners. Like when I went to Koh Samet uh, with a Thai person, they had to pay 40 baht tax. I paid 200 baht. Uh, it's worth mentioning and showing them at the entrance that you are over 60 because a lot of them, they do offer a, quite a generous discount, like the one I had at the Mahakan Skywalk. Um, it was 850 baht to get in, but because I was over 60, I only paid 350. So it's a really good note. It's really worth noting that down if you come here, if you're over 60. Um, okay, Dale Myers. Uh, thank you, Dr. Diff. Uh, Dale Myers, uh, I just, 
I just want to say hello from Canada. I wish I was there for the Thailand New Year, but I will be there in June, staying for six weeks. Have a great stream, your friend from Vancouver. Thank you, uh, Dale. Um, look, if you haven't been here before, you've only been here once or twice, and you've never been here during Songkran, it's great fun. It really is. If you've never experienced it, you know, you put on your shorts and an old vest and you go out there, especially around the Nana area, or you'll get you'll probably 400, 500 people there right now as we speak because it's the first day of Songkran. And everybody will be totally drenched. You've got pickup trucks going by with people throwing water off the back. And it's great fun. Uh, but for me, I've done it. I've been there. Uh, it's just something I don't want to get involved in this year. And uh, and I know a lot of people who live out here who who kind of feel the same, you know. And it's a good excuse to have a really slow weekend, you know. Uh, I've, I've prepared the stories for next weekend. And uh, I just try and learn new things on the, on the PC. Um, hence an ad hoc stream. Don't forget the next live stream is uh, on schedule for next Sunday, a week tomorrow at the usual times. Uh, right, Hobson's Choice again. You're saying uh, 4 p.m. 2.5 while was 160 here yesterday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, four. Sorry, four. Not 4 p.m. as in the time, but four as in the particles. And yeah, yeah. It was on Kosamu. It was four. And the following day, it was eight. And then on the way back, I stayed one night in Rayong, and it was 25. The PM was 25. And, and I got back here, and it was like 90 yesterday. And I believe it's about, what is it today? I showed you at the beginning, but I forgot. Uh, if you want to check out the pollution levels, the app you want to download onto your phone is uh, IQ Air. It's the best. It's the best. Um, okay. So, it's yeah, it's 91. It's, it's over the safe level but for bangkok that's not so bad 91 you know i think europe class 35 and under is safe bangkok's figure is 50 or under um i've only ever seen it under 50 once here uh, and i check it nearly every day the, the lowest i've seen it here is 45 let's see when the rain comes um okay dr if you say we we call them bungalows too okay there was another name that the thais used to describe um single story houses and i can't remember what it was it wasn't prefabs. Um, I can't remember what it was. Um, right, Pat Tai. Uh, gorgeous weather in Sydney. Not upgraded to business class. First thing, uh, first thing. Thinking your flights over to Bangkok. Okay, you should go business class. Splash out. It's great. Um, I went once when I sold my house. Ranch, ranch house. Mike from USA, Boston. How you doing, Mike from the USA in Boston? Um, just back on that Airbnb thing again. There's, there was a guy out here, I did a little video with him. He was in Sukhumvit Soy 10, right down near the park, uh, Benjikiti Park. They've closed the gate to the park now because they're uh, redoing the bridge till June. Um, he was in Airbnb, and he told me the same story. He says, you know what, when I met the guy, he was really shifty, and we, we couldn't meet at the apartment. He And he told him it was a friend or something like that. Really strange. Um, is that another super chat there? Danny, thank you, mate. Very kind of you. Hi, Peter. How is, uh, I won't say the word, how is it? getting on you know what i talk to simon occasionally uh the price the original price has dropped obviously i'm not gonna i'm gonna try not to say the words that will get uh youtube upset okay but he's doing okay you know there uh there is there's a lot of negativity about it we're talking about the broccoli right there's a lot of negativity about it people come out and say oh they're going to change the law and make it totally illegal which isn't true uh, there's been discussions, uh, they're going to tighten up the laws for sure, but I'm not in that business myself, Simon is, and Simon's a friend of mine, but his factory's doing doing good, you know, I mean, they're making money, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't discuss it with great detail, but uh, yeah, I think it's all fine, but Danny, thanks very much, very generous of you, mate, uh, don't expect super chats on a, on an ad hoc stream, always nice to, to get the odd one in, though. Um, Uh, it's up to you. You're saying, uh, I'm heading to Bangkok for two weeks from now, hopefully miss Songkran and the worst of the wet season. Do you know what? If, if you don't like Songkran, the worst place you can go to is um, Pattaya because it, last year it went on for about two and a half weeks. They start early and it just goes on and on and on because, you know, it's a fun town, isn't it? You know, people go there there to party. It's just a party town. And, you know, Songkran is just like, it's just like never ending down there. So, you know, I stay well clear of Patio when Songkran's on. But if you say two weeks, it, they should be done and dusted. I don't, I don't think they'll have any water left by two weeks' time. Uh, Shabu, uh, Shinabu business, is it? Let me... Shin Shinobi business. I don't know one of those. Really enjoy your content. Uh, we love listening to you and read stories. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't slaughter your name there. I recognize that picture. It's an actor, isn't it? Who is it? Let me know who that is. 
I'm pretty sure it's an actor. Yeah. Okay. Who's we? Is that you and the wife or you and your son? Or I'd like to just out of interest, really. But thank you for the compliment. Uh, Mac McLaren. Uh, great to see you alive. Now, am I guessing this is Clive from many uh, moons ago? How are you doing, Clive? Uh, I was wondering what happened to you, Clive, because I know you had a Filipino girlfriend. That was about probably a year ago, two years. It must be two years ago now. When, do you remember in the dark days of COVID, there was a bunch of regular people who used to come into the live streams. I used to do them on a Friday night and a Sunday night, and I get a lot of people in those streams. You know, uh, I was stuck at home like everybody else, and I had time. I had time to do a lot of preparing, uh, unlike now. And um, you actually came into one of the streams, if it is you. And remember, there's ten, about 10 people in the stream. Nobody could hear. I brought all these people into the stream. It's all little boxes. And we, nobody knew what anybody else was saying because everybody was talking over each other. But nice to see you back, Clive, if it is you. And I'm thinking it probably is you. Uh, it's too much of a coincidence, the name there. Uh, Jeremy, how are you? Uh, morning, Sir Peter. Got my, got my notifications working again. Brilliant. Okay. Good to see you, in, Jeremy. I didn't think I was going to have too many people from the UK here. I've been going about 30 minutes now, uh, well over 100 in now, 132. Uh, just a very, very casual stream today. I don't want to go out. As a, I don't know if you can see from the window. Let me just try and turn this, give you an idea of, you can't really see it because there's a building next to me, but it's, I was going to have the camera like that because it's quite a nice view, but I'm very dark. I don't know. The lighting's not great in this room, so we'll go back to there. Yeah. Okay, there's my mic there, look. Uh, I don't like the mic being in the shot. You know, I see, like, um, Tim, TNT has this big bloody thing on the side there, doesn't he? Uh, right. Um, LA Meth, which, hello, how you doing? Um, yeah, okay. I, I kind of agree with that. You say, McLaren, the worst expat is the one who slates their home country. Yeah, the, the, the guy I'm thinking of, I, I've never seen him on YouTube, but he's a kind of youngish guy and he's on TikTok and he's always, you know, slate in the UK. And, uh, you know, if he got seriously ill, what do you think he'd do? The first thing he'd do is jump on a, a plane and go back and try and use the um, NHS, wouldn't he? Well, as, as I would, you know, if I, I've got a million bop, tucked away in a bank here for any serious illness because I just hate insurance companies and because um, you pay into them for years don't you and then they find an ex every excuse in the book why not to pay you uh, and I, I won't go through it again but I told you about my experience where they I didn't have insurance decline but they had so many restrictions on it I thought sod this there's no point in it uh, and I've just put the the, the million bar by which should cover things like a heart attack and stuff like that but um, you know if I got some serious Ill illness like you know, something that needed to be treated ongoing. Of course, I would go back to the UK and use the NHS. And you get the people who say, oh, if you've been away from the from England for the two years, you can't get treated by the NHS. And that's absolute rubbish, you know. When have you ever known somebody to have a serious illness in England and they say to someone, no, we're not going to treat you? It just doesn't happen, does it? Even, even people who are not English, foreigners who come on tourist, um, you know, to cheat the NHS and get they get treated. I'm hearing music from somewhere. Must be outside, you know. That when it's party time, the ties they love their loud music. I shut the windows earlier because it was like booming. Um, I'm not far from a party street, so uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly where I live, but I'm not far. Um, Dan the man, hi from Conken. How you doing, Dan the man? Um, I might be getting up that way uh, pretty soon. Uh, I used to work there. I was there for two years in Conken, and um, I just fancy doing a little road trip up there. Uh, Steve, how you doing, mate? Road, road yours travels. Afternoon, Peter and the gang. Just got. Back, the hotel from this Songkran madness lasted for four hours. Anong only celebrates it two days, so not too bad. I was talking about that earlier, Steve. If you're in Pattaya, then it goes on for two weeks, and it's uh, I, I'm not into it myself. I'm not I'm not a, a party pooper, as they say. But I, like I explained at the beginning of the stream, I first did it here in 1994. I was involved in it, and I've done it for at least 15, 20 times during the Songkran Festival was when I worked here. And it just doesn't do anything for me anymore. You know, to go out and at 64 and start shooting water pistols about, it's, it's kind of, a, I'm over that, you know what I mean? So, uh, but if, you, if you've not been involved in it, like I said earlier, it's a lot of fun and I hope you had a good time down there. Uh, two days is great in Bangkok. It started last night unofficially. I was lucky I didn't get caught, but I was out. And uh, it's full on today. It will be full on tomorrow, which is Sunday. Uh, possibly Monday as well. Tuesday, we're back to normal. So I've stocked up the fridge. I've stocked up the cupboards. I've got plenty of food, plenty of beer. Uh, I've got a nice swimming pool on the roof, which I'll use 
uh, earlier and I've got some good movie apps and uh, I'll do a little bit of work as well. But good to have you in the stream, Steve. Wasn't expecting that. Um, Hobson's Choice, Miss Cooler Weather and the Seasons, Crisp, Cool, Fresh Mornings. You've described it better than I have. That's exactly what I meant. Uh, Barry Bluebird, good morning here uh, here in the UK, Peter. Hope you are well. Hi, Barry. Yeah, very well. But as I was saying earlier, it's it's sweltering out there, sweltering. I don't think you can tell from me just turning the camera because it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to kind of show it on a camera, but it is very hot. About 40 degrees today. I'm messing about with my camera now. There we are. Right. Um, Thomas Wynn. From what I've gathered from Tiger News, it seems Thailand is becoming the next Benidorm, Magaluf, and other Greek tourist destinations. Yeah, in a way, I kind of agree with you. It's uh, what what's happening now is because it's all over the internet, and I don't help because I'm I'm part of it. Even a lot of people have come to Thailand. I've told me that I only came to Thailand because I started using your YouTube, uh, watching your YouTube videos, and the problem is most people who come here behave themselves, but. There's just so many foreigners misbehaving themselves now and getting deported and getting put in jail and getting fined. They come here and they just make trouble. And unfortunately, there's they just seem to think they can come here and do what they want. I mean, I'm not a goody two-shoes. I mean, I've done stupid things in my, in my time here, but not to the extent where I'd get deported or slapped up in jail or stuff. You know, I mean, I remember 20 years ago, I remember I drank half a bottle of whiskey and probably four cans of Stella. It was three o'clock in the morning, uh, two o'clock in the morning, say. Everything had closed, and I decided it would be a good idea to jump in my car and drive down to Pattaya. Luckily, I made it unscathed. I woke up the following day, and I thought, you stupid, stupid idiot. You know, if I'd have got caught, what would have happened if I got killed a tie? You know, so we've all done those stupid things, haven't we? But you get these people come here now, and they just... They just spoil it for everybody else. I mean, there's so many incidents that have happened lately. You know, there was a guy in Phuket who kicked the female doctor because she was sitting on supposedly his step, and it wasn't his step. So he's been deported, the Swiss guy. And then there was another Swiss guy who, uh, what did he do? He did something, another Swiss guy did something else. But I was reading this week about a guy, a 50-year-old woman who's hiding in a temple, Thai woman this is, because her Austrian boyfriend who's about 70 and has got a drink problem beats her up on a regular basis broke her arm and she's hiding in this temple so you know he's not going to be around for long but and, and there's a big problem with Russians in Phuket as well at the moment because what they're doing they're opening nominee companies you know they're opening companies that they own but they have a tie to front it and the police have gone on a big crackdown down there and uh, they, they've you know they're deporting people there are, I think there's 91 people this year uh, down there being deported so far um, there was a gang of five, uh, I don't know where they were from, if they were Russians or Romanians or something, but they, they basically uh, kidnapped somebody for $12 million, bar, $12 million of Bitcoin. They've just been jailed for, I think, two years each. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there is a lot of more people coming to Thailand because it's on the internet, and there's a lot more troublemakers coming here. And you know my comment about the guys carrying invisible carpets. You know what I mean by that? So you're walking along Patia Beachfront. You've got some guys probably about 30, you know, and he's walking along like he's got two invisible carpets under his arm, you know, like, look at me, how tough I am, you know, you're a 64-year-old man, I'll knock your lights out sort of thing. I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean? They walk about all puffed up, like, why come here? Why do you come to Thailand? Beautiful country, great food, nice people, odd scam, but then you've got to be better than them with your brain, right? So you're not going to get hit on the head with a brick. You're not going to get a gun pointed at you unless you're very, very unlucky. It's a very, very safe country. Like I've said many times, I feel safer walking down Sukhumvit Road at three o'clock in the morning than I would do walking through London at three in the afternoon. And I really mean that. So I just don't understand the mentality of these people who come here and do things to jeopardize, jeopardize you know, their, their liberty uh, and maybe get banned from ever coming here again it just seems crazy to me and i think most people especially our viewers on this channel as well i think most people tend to think the same you come here to have a good time you meet some nice people uh, you do the girlfriend thing while you're here and you go home save up and come here and do it again i just do not understand these people really you got me going on now uh but anyway right i'll get back into the comments um yeah, I answered that a bit early, Jason, but I'll just say very quickly again, I'm hoping to do another video with Marley after Songkran. Uh, I've already been in touch with her. Uh, she's just very busy. She does a lot of MC and she advertises products for companies and uh, she, she does a lot of that stuff. And I've got, a, you know, I can only use her when she's free. Uh, Steve the Butcher. Morning, Pete. Back from Patia. Missing it already. Um, it's very wet down there at the moment, Steve, with Songkran. Very, 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 very wet. Um, 
Right, Barry Bluebird, uh, that's brilliant for MRT and BTS travel. Uh, what about Thai Railways? I, I don't really use the Thai Railways here because, you know, sorry about the nose thing. It's always like the dust in the air or something. Um, I don't use really use the trains here. If I go to somewhere like Pattaya Hua Hin, I drive. I've got a car, okay? Um, if I'm going in town, I use my scooter. Some places I go to, like if I'm with Marley and we go to make a video somewhere, like we went down to the river. Uh, you know, we went down there and we, we took the BTS uh, down to um, Taxim Bridge. You know, I've got cameras and stuff. It's not really um, good to go on a scooter with all that sort of thing. Um, so I don't really know about the railways. Uh, the one thing I do know is there's only two services to Pattaya by train, and they're both on it very early in the morning. There is a new train um, scheduled to Hua Hin now. Uh, supposedly it's a lot quicker and good, I believe. Steve, you took it, did you? Or uh, somebody told me that they... Um, they did. Yeah, that's the other one now. You've got me going now. I personally am skeptical about the story of the two New Zealanders and Thai police officer. It's important to note the officer had a smirk on his face. Um, you might have mistaken it as a smirk. Maybe it just looked like that, but it, it's, it's a real story. I've seen pictures of it. Uh, if you don't know the story, these two uh, New Zealand people, two New Zealand guys, they're brothers actually, two guys from New Zealand who are brothers. They have filthy rich parents, not millionaires, actually billionaires. And they got they were getting stopped for some kind of a traffic violation, and they they just attacked the policeman. They took his the gun out of his holster. One shot was fired, whether it was accidental or I don't know. Um, and as far as I know, they got deported, right? Uh, but I, I I've seen pictures, and it doesn't look like a setup or a or a you know anything to me. I mean, it's a it's a crazy thing to happen, is it? To think people would do that. Um, Hobson Choice, you're in agreement with me. He's saying, uh, feel very safe here for sure. Um, Chris Ty, uh, good good guys and bad guys. Uh, be good guys and everything will be fine. Okay. I mean, one of the silly things I did here, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I'll tell you because I've grown up now. But one of the one of the silly things I did here, I was uh, this was in the days when Pat Pong was really rocking. So, and I'm, I'm going from memory, so I can't remember all the details, but I was with a very good friend and we were in a, they were called discos back then, right? Sounds such a dated word, but we were in a, a disco in Pat Pong. It was upstairs somewhere. It might not have even been on the main Pat Pong one, somewhere around Pat Wong. I can't remember, but it was a proper kind of nightclub slash disco. Uh, and th there was a lot of working girls in there, you know, guys brought them from Golga bars and normal bars. And the thing about this in the old, back then, um, not everything closed at two o'clock, you know, but some of the, like the high, the Golga bars and stuff did, but you had after hours places, nightclubs and, you know, like angels in Nana Plaza that used to stay up until six in the morning. You know, um, you've now got the Nana nightclub there. I've never been in there. I don't know what's, what's going on, but unless they can stay open later than two, I can't see it lasting that long because the, the nightclub, uh, I'm going off track a little bit. I'll get back to what I was talking about, but the, um, the nightclub, angels in the nana back then the reason it did so well is because nana plaza closed down at two and everybody literally hundreds of people just went over to the angels that was open till six in the morning so the one silly thing i can remember that sticks out that i did which i thought was a joke which turned out to be very uh, a little dangerous let's not say very dangerous so I, I went to this um kind of nightclub after it was about three in the morning and me and my good friend was standing at the bar we had a drink and we were just looking around yeah, as you do you know um and to get to the women's toilets, there was two stairs in front of us. So we were standing at the bar looking around at this. There was a dance floor there. There were a load of tables. The girls, to go to the toilet, had to come up these two steps in front of us, kind of walk to the toilets that way. So as they were walking away, they had their back towards us. So as they came up, sometimes the odd girl, I'd uh, tap a bum and kind of look around, and they'd turn around and think it was my friend, right? And he got really pissed off at me and really annoyed with me. And I was kind of a bit immature. I was very young, uh, younger when I first came here, right? And uh, I did this about half a dozen times. And he took me to one side and said, look, you don't know how dangerous what you're doing is. It's not the UK, you know, because if she's with somebody who's really connected or a really bad person, they see you do that, you could, you know, really get in trouble. And it, since then, you know, it, it woke me up. It shook me up. So, you know, we all do stupid things uh, to a point. But you've got to realize at some point what you can get away with and what you can't. I'm very, very careful now. Sometimes I'm too careful. People say, like, even on YouTube, they say you, you're too cautious, but I just don't want to take chances anymore. Um, thank you, Jason, although I'm not a great fan of it these days. Um, right, Toby says, 
Barry Bluebird, you don't need to worry about the rail service. It's dirt cheap. That's a good point, actually. I know the railways are very, very cheap. Um, the thing about those cars like that, uh, if even if you don't get the discount, like the um, <clears throat> the BTS card, you'll know if you've been here before. The BTS goes to all this. It goes all over Bangkok near enough now, and all the tourist attractions are kind of not far. I went to do. I went to the motor show last year to make a video. I haven't done it this year because it didn't get a lot of numbers, and it was a whole day out and. You know, it, I feel like I wasted a full day because it, it didn't get that many people view it. So I didn't go this year. But as an example, it was, it was quite far. It was about 10 stops away. And I went on the BTS and the BTS station was, you know, literally a five minute taxi ride to the convention center where the car show was. Uh, so it's very good at, for getting around. But the, the thing is, a lot of the stations are just so busy that when you have to go up, queue up and buy a ticket, you can be there for five or 10 minutes. And a good example of that is ASOC BTS. If you're there at five o'clock, because it's the interchange with the MB, with the um, the MRT, there's a lot of people there, Thais and foreigners, and you can wait a long time for a ticket. So this uh, rabbit card that you buy, uh, the good thing about it is you, you, you don't ever have to go to the ticket booth again, only if you want to top it up, then you've got Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock in the morning when it's dead, right? Uh, so you're not saving any money on it, but you're saving a lot of time and it's so convenient. You know, I definitely recommend getting one if you come here. Um, <clears throat> Right, uh, Chris Ty. Though my uh, though my next trip, I will I will try to be even more polite than usual. I will do my best to be the best possible tourist ambassador. I don't think you have to be an angel when you come here, Chris. Just don't do anything silly. You know these guys in Patia who get into fights and insult the ties. And you know what about the other guy? The guy, if you watch the live stream I did last, uh, was it last Saturday? Yeah, it was Saturday night. Swiss guy. Okay, he gets a taxi from the airport, a nice like a Mercedes. Uh, I think, no, he wasn't Swiss. I apologize to any Swiss out there. He wasn't Swiss. He, they thought he was either Austrian or Germany, German, but they didn't confirm it. Uh, but this guy was picked up in Phuket, Phuket again. Um, he's in the back of his taxi on the way to the hotel, and he's a guy of about 60. He lights up a cigarette. The taxi driver turns around very carefully and says, you've got to put that out. It's not allowed in Thailand. It's a law. It's not me. It's a law. And the, the guy ends up jumping from the back seat to the, <clears throat> the front seat, and I showed a picture last week. I haven't got it anymore. But the guys, he's pulling the taxi driver. They're in a scuffle coming out of the front door. You know, and you're thinking, what the hell is wrong with these people? You know, wait five minutes, ten minutes till you get to your hotel and have a cigarette. If you can't wait, every taxi driver in Thailand, if you said, listen, I've got to have a cigarette, pull over. I'll give you 40 baht. Not one of them would say no, I guarantee. Not one. <clears throat> Uh, Frank travels. I can't wait to get to the beautiful golden sandy beaches in Pattaya. Well, if you like sandy beaches down there, you're probably better taking the um, the, the uh, Songtel over to uh, or the Bart bus over to Jomtien. It's a much nicer stretch of beach. The beaches on the islands, uh, like Koh Samet, it's the easiest beach to get to. From uh, it's not the easiest one. Koh Lan is the easiest one because you just cross over from Pattaya. But the nicest island that you can get to from Bangkok is. Uh, I mean, it's a three hour drive, two and a half hours, three hours down to Rayong, and then you go over to the islands. But the water is like it's like a bounty advert. Remember the chocolate bar bounty with a girl on the on the palm tree? I mean, it's it's phenomenal. It's the water is crystal clear. Okay, the sand is uh, kind of gone whitish. You know, palm trees hanging everywhere. And you go into the sea, and it's it's like getting into a hot bath. You know, I mean, it's really nice. So. What, when I went to Rayong on the way back, I had one night in Rayong, and I stayed in a hotel called the, um, what was it called? It was quite a good little hotel, actually, the Palma Resort. Okay, it makes it sound like a big five-star uh, luxury place. It wasn't. It was a, a little Thai hotel, right, on a really nice bit of the beach because they had deck chairs and everything there. And uh, it has a little restaurant out the front. It was about 1,300 baht for the room. Um, and it was very basic Thai style. You know, there was a couple of beds, double beds in there, so a Thai family could stay in there. But the aircon worked. The bathroom was uh, was clean. The whole room was clean, but it was very basic, you know, uh, shiny tile floors. Uh, Thai style, you know what I mean by Thai style, right? Isn't that, it's, there's no, it, it does what it says on the tin, but there's no bells and whistles, okay? Uh, I, I thought it was a little bit pricey, but it was a very uh, – the, the staff were lovely, and they had a little restaurant out the front. Um, where they did a bit of foreign food and some Thai food. The food was very reasonably priced, and the food was pretty good, I thought, as well, and the location was good. But what spoiled it for me for Rayong, um, you've got this beautiful miles of coastline, you know, and just 
between where you know where I was sitting and the sea between us there's one long continuous line of plastic that have been washed up you know bottles plastic bottles and everything plastic and it's just you look down the beach and you think it's a shame you know because it's a paradise even rayong you know it's, rayong's a big spread out town you know the actual town itself is quite far from the beach where i was and uh, you just look at it and you think what a shame and it was dead as well uh, i talked to one of the ladies who was selling uh, there's quite a number of expats live there you know older guys and couples and things and i was speaking to one of the late i forget what she was making some chicken or something i said well why is it so quiet you know and she, is it usually like this hadn't been to around for years and she says no because songkran everybody's gone home so what happens is a lot of people from east a lot of people from east Anna, you know in bangkok bangkok's really quiet at the moment compared to normal i mean not quiet quite because it's a city obviously but when i was out yesterday in the traffic i noticed a, a difference there was a lot less traffic than there usually is and, and that's what she said she said a lot of people have gone home you know they're, they're in rayong because it's a um, touristy place they work and they go home for the new year songkran and uh, but i you know i'm kind of thinking about moving out of bangkok in a few years time uh so somewhere a bit more cheaper and somewhere quieter and i've got a few options in my head and i thought rayong might be one of them and uh, but i don't think i could live there it's a nice enough place it's cheap um the beach is okay uh, i can't fault it but it's it's just there's a funny i had a funny feeling about the place and what at night um it felt not unsafe but it felt a bit eerie you know i mean i was walking down the beach road and you've got these the beach is in complete blackness you know you have got street lights but they're not like it's not like patio where you've got these really strong clusters of kind of almost like spotlights they're just like one bulb you know and it's yeah kind of an eerie feeling rayong so i, I don't think it's a place I'd, I'd like to kind of live there full time uh, but you've got to go there if you want to go to coal cement that was the whole point of the story right outside in um there's got to be more to the story to unnamed people don't suddenly try to disarm a police officer yeah perhaps there is more to the to the story i don't know but i just i don't think it was fake um okay jason says peter i love i love song grande okay good on you uh jason I, I say well clear of it these days uh just say a quick hi to ken ken christopherson welcome hi peter would you ever write a book on your memories i just don't like writing you know if somebody came to me and said right okay uh I won't charge you anything. I'll write a book for you. You just sit in a chair and tell us, tell me in detail from leaving school, what you did till today. I'd say, yeah, but I just haven't got the patience to sit at a PC and write it all out. And I don't think my, 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 um, I don't know if my spellings and grammar and all the rest of it are good enough, but it, it would be quite a story. I mean, I have, I have actually worked, uh, all over the world with, um, the hotel, business you know i was worked for a company called a core french company and uh, i went to bad com countries i went to good countries i had some terrible experiences uh you'd be shocked uh, and i've had some brilliant experiences and um yes yeah, quite a, i feel very privileged like i've had not a bad life actually i, I sound like i got one foot in the cough not already i mean i've still got hopefully years ahead um barry for me senders you out for song cram peter it's just here in samu no i'm not going out barry i'm not into it anymore uh duffler where can i go in thailand that isn't overrun with russians these days uh i didn't see any in rayong <laughs> honestly i didn't see many of anything in rayong um there was kosamet was a, there was a quite a few on there uh definitely jumped in is absolutely packed with russians now jumped in there's a night market uh when i say market is food it's not clothes and stuff few trinkets but there's a right in the middle of jump team beach if you're a regular you know there there's kind of like a fake windmill and then there's some lines of food stores and all those stores used to have it in Thai, the the whatever they were selling their prices they had it in thai and they had it in english and if you go there now you'll see it's in thai and it's in russian okay there's a lot of russians in patia now even at night when i walk along the beach i'd see couples i'd see older people the odd family but now you see a lot of young guys and when i say young i'm talking they look anywhere between 20 28 you know they're doing pull-ups on those bars on the beach and uh there's a lot phuket forget it it's just packed with russians i think they're everywhere everywhere i don't know about chiang mai i haven't been up there recently um but you know what can you do i mean they've got just as much right to come in now they get 90 day visas don't they you know it means like from the uk we get 30 days when we come here uh, they're like the russians and the uh, chinese are now getting 90 days the good news is though they're going to let ties go to the uk visa free so you know like if 
when we come here, you get a 30 day stamp as a tourist. You don't need to apply for a visa. Well, it's on the cards that ties will be able to do that in the UK. Lord Cameron was here a few weeks ago, our former prime minister, and they're, they're, there's some kind of a deal going on. And they've said, you know, um, yeah, why not? You know, ties can go to the UK, have a trip. But that's great for any guy who's got a girlfriend. You know, it used to be hor horrendously um, tedious, the paperwork and having to go to the British embassy for an interview and pay the fees and everything. Now you just buy two airline tickets. You can take your girlfriend for a couple of weeks, see what she thinks of it and come back to Thailand. It'd be great. Um, Nikki, uh, Peter, I've been going to Thailand since 2001. I never knew, I never know so many Farangs to behave like total dickheads in the last two years. Absolutely. I agree with you, Nick. You know, I mean, I've seen some appalling behavior. I t I, look, I'm going to repeat a story I told about a month ago, right? Because I, I was disgusted with this guy, absolutely disgusted with him. And there was no need for it. And I felt like I was back into the UK. Right. So there's a 7 Eleven quite close to my building. The 7 Eleven's everywhere, isn't there? So I go into this 7 Eleven. And apologies if you've heard this story before, but I am going to tell it. Right, so I go into this 7-Eleven, as I do every other day. I buy milk, I buy eggs, I buy beer, I buy, you know, 7-Eleven, they're handy, aren't they? So I go in there probably four times a week. So I go in there, it's about five o'clock at night. Uh, I actually went to get some beers. That's why I know it was five o'clock at night. You've got to wait till five, between two and five. You can't buy alcohol in here. I know places in Patia, but not here. Anyway, um, so I go in there and I'm paying... Uh, I've got a card now, uh, a true card. I don't use money anymore, um, not cash notes, you know. But I was back then. This was about three months ago. So I had, a, I think, four Leos or Chang, something like that. Went up, paid, and I got some change out, and I dropped some coins on the floor. And there was this guy, and he was a northerner. He was an English northerner because I heard him speaking, and he was absolutely leathered. He was drunk, pissed, right? He was very drunk. And he would brought in a beggar from outside and I don't know, he told him to choose something and that's fair enough. Okay. No problem with that. But he's in there, but he's loud and I can hear him and he's a typical kind of like, you know, badly behaved Brit, as they say, you know, the, you know, the kind of guys I'm talking about. And uh, so I'm at the counter and he's standing kind of three down, like swaying and talking very loudly. And I drop these coins and he, I couldn't quite, he said something to me and I couldn't quite get it. He said something like, oh, you're not looking after your money or you throw money around or something related to me dropping coins. Okay, I don't know what it was exactly. So I didn't hear him. So I turned to him and I just, I'm not in an aggressive way. I just said to him, what did he say? I didn't, because I didn't hear him. I said, oh, what did he say? And he said, oh, he said something. Then he said, oh, we can take it outside if you want. And I looked at him and I thought, take what outside? You know, what an absolute incredibly stupid idiot you are you know so i turn around to him kind of bluffing because he's a lot younger than me he's about 40 i said well, yeah whatever you want mate you know I'm, I'm, i've got to go out pay for my goods and i left and you know he didn't come out and um but here's this guy he doesn't know me he's drunk out of his mind and he's offering me out outside in the street and he's in thailand i haven't seen him since so i guess he was one of these guys who saved up his you know broke open his piggy bank and came here for a week and I've never seen him again, and hopefully I'll never see him again. But you're right, Nick. There's more and more of these people coming here. And, uh, you know, you can have a lot of fun here and, and not upset people, but there are some people who just cannot go out and have a good time without upsetting others. It's just in their nature, isn't it? Uh, Billy G, where would you recommend to stay on Koh Samet? Uh, I, I stay at, it's not a cheap hotel. I stay at the Diamond Beach. Uh, I don't know if it's called Resort or Hotel. It's on keo beach i think it's called keo k-e-o and the reason i chose that hotel is uh I, I hadn't been to koh samet for 20 years like, i can't remember anything about it so i just typed into google which is the best beach on koh samet i got the same answer come up which is the beach i've just mentioned uh looked at it on google earth and thought yep that's all sandy there because some of it's rock you know you've got to be careful it's not all sand and some of it is cliffs okay and then it goes down to beaches so this apparently was the best beach and i looked at it and there's various hotels along there and i just looked at some reviews and i you know you you can get the uh, pictures of go on to youtube if you find a hotel the best place to look what the room's like and everything's gone to youtube I, and it was called the Di diamond beach hotel and i just put into youtube diamond beach hotel and somebody had done some drone footage and some of the room i thought that looks okay but it's not cheap uh, the other thing you need to know about is you know when you go to these beach hotels you, you've got this um thing you you kind of think right i'm going to an island my hotel is on the beach and you're kind of almost imagining that you're going to be under a palm tree on this absolutely deserted beach and there's going to be you and your girlfriend or whoever you're with or alone and a cocktail and the sea is going to be coming in and you know it's warm and there's no one around 
All that's true. It will be like that. But there are hundreds of people. And the beach, okay, about six o'clock at night when the sun goes down, there are probably 100 people in the sea, you know, because it's a big, long stretch of beach. And a lot of Thais and other Asian countries uh, go there for holidays. And they don't like to be out in the sun because they get dark. So what happens when the sun goes down, they bring the kids out and they all go into the sea and swim. Uh, but, yeah, Diamond Beach is pretty good. I think it's good. Uh, you usually pay about 1800 baht a night for it. I paid 3150 this time because, obviously, it's busy. And that wasn't for seafront rooms. They've only got probably eight seafront rooms. The rest are kind of bungalows behind. They call it a garden view. Uh, they're very, very nice rooms, very comfortable. When my daughters came here, I rented the beachfront rooms. I paid 18,000 baht for two nights, right? horrendously expensive. Uh and uh, yeah, you open the balcony doors, like the sliding doors, and the, and the beach is like there in front of you, you know. But it actually uh, woke me up about five in the morning because you don't realize when you're actually asleep and there's no sound around, the crashing of the waves is actually quite loud, you know. So it woke me up. Um, okay, D D Duffler, is it? Uh, was, was in Phuket in February and couldn't move for people, beaches packed out dawn till dusk and the other thing is because uh, i watched him newton at most days tnt and he talks a lot about phuket uh, apparently because there's so many more people there now the traffic's horrendous you know i mean you, you can't go anywhere it's just so so busy franco how you doing uh what have i missed just got up you lazy no <laughs> how you doing frank i didn't it's again it's just an ad hoc it's song cran here everybody's throwing water about i didn't want to go out in it and it's extremely hot it's very very hot today um I've, I've released two videos today and uh, I thought, what shall I do? And I thought, why not do an, an ad hoc live stream? Been gone for an hour now, uh, nearly 200 people in and just no schedule, no games, no anything, no news stories, just having a chat, as they say. But good to see you in Franco. Uh, Franco was here a few weeks ago and uh, my suspicions are it, be, it will only be a few weeks till he, he's here again. Right. Jason Finch, happy song, Cran. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Billy also greetings, Peter, from every uh, and everyone. Uh, Dr. Diff, I have decided the TV show The Night Manager is about Peter's former life. I've never seen that. The might, the, the is it a movie or a TV show? The Night Manager, don't know. Um, manager, yeah. Um, Stephen Vary, is it Russians are probably dodging the Ukraine war? Yeah, uh, a lot of people are saying that. I don't know what would happen to them when they go back there, but it seems to be escalating over there. I, I don't like to hear stories about like I've I, I, I watch a lot of TikTok videos, and the reason being is because it's very – when you watch YouTube, sometimes the videos are 20 minutes long, half an hour long, and I don't want to watch a half an hour long video. What will happen is I'll go to the toilet, and, uh, you know, as you do, I don't want to go too detailed, but a few little one-minute videos are great. Or I'll make my coffee in the morning, and after I've checked comments and everything, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm going to have some breakfast, and I just prop the phone up against a bottle or something, and I, I just go through TikTok videos. They're very quick and very uh, good – to um to watch and, and what a lot of the videos that are coming up now is all about what's going on in the middle east and you know progression of war and stuff like that and i just i just don't want to get i don't want to think about it you know i know i'm like an ostrich sticking their head in the sand but you know i've still got family in the uk uh you know and i, I just it's it's very worrying what's going on at the moment um and, and i just i don't want to get into a discussion about it uh, if it happens it happens it's going to be terrible for everybody and if it doesn't happen then that's the best uh, outcome there could be right i'm going to say thank you to uh, now i hope i pronounce this properly um <laughs> you're not really advertising yourself are you thank you for the super chat Char Ch let me have a go at it chanrajit hgv lgv pcv cp cpc towing trailer training have a copy of me and thanks for the stream uh, yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I'm not going to sell that again, but uh, yeah, a little bit of nice advertising. I'm nothing wrong with that, you know. If you want to send a small super chat and do a bit of advertising, nothing wrong with that. Um, but uh, your name? Are you are you in Thailand then? Your company? Um, okay, Napoleon bl blown apart. Uh, hi Pete, it's been a while. Missed your lives, but watch on catch up. All the best from sunny Wales. Yeah. Uh, Good to see you in the stream. Just another ad hoc a Saturday. I don't know why I've decided to do it on a Saturday. I'm just a bit bored, I suppose. But thank you for uh, good seeing again. I mean, right. Um, okay. Right. I think I'm almost there. There's no more chat coming in. I've got nothing else prepared. So unless uh, you want to talk about anything else, I've been going for over an hour now. Um, that's probably around it. Let me have a little break and we'll see if any anybody else wants to discuss anything. Okay, Susan. 
Susan Banyan. Is it Bay Banyan? Um, right. When the guy offered you out, did you pop your little? Uh, yeah. Okay. Very, very, very droll. Okay. Just give me a minute, guys. Uh, some guy in his mum's basement. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, Mazza. Hey, up, Peter. Watching from a hotel room on an Eastbourne seafront. <laughs> What's the weather like in Eastbourne, uh, Mazza? I'm not going to knock it. It might be very nice where you are, but Eastbourne, it doesn't really conjure up pictures of kind of tropical beaches in my mind. Uh, Super bro. Hello. How are you doing? Um, Gravel Billy One. Thanks for your time. Always enjoy your contact uh, content. Yeah. Thanks very much. Um, Glad, nice to get a compliment, unlike the, the last dickhead who was just leaving comments. Um, I've always wondered what sort of mentality people have who go on to live streams and just come out with stupid comments. I mean, they must be kind of like really either poorly educated or, or extremely stupid people who are frustrated with their own lives. That's that's my own conclusion. I can't think of any other reason because unless you know somebody personally, which I didn't know that last person, never heard of them, uh, that's probably another reason why they they live sad lives um unless you know somebody personally why would you go onto a live stream and start insulting them it's just it just shows lack of character doesn't it it just shows low education and it just shows you know very it's, it's you're just a simple person who can't they, they've got nothing to do maybe they've got no friends in their lives so it's kind of sad in a way isn't it I mean, people around like that uh del miles um I'm going to be in Patia June 22nd, rainy season. Hope you get some dry days, Dale, uh, which is low season. Yep. I'm thinking of staying at the CMCM as I've stayed at the air. Is that Airbnb you mean? In November, which, no, you've stayed at the, I can't quite make out what that is. You put AR bore, AR bore, is it? In November, which was very nice. Would you like to try something different? Well, you know what? I'm one of those people that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, you know, it's like when I go to Patia, I, I tend to stay in the same hotel every time I go down there um, because, you know, I just don't want to take a chance that I'll book in. I, I'll give you a typical example, okay? When I go to Patia now, I stay in the Flipper Lodge Hotel on Soye. It's right at the end of Soye. Uh, it's a basic hotel. I get the upgraded room, which is about 1,500 baht, a uh, high season 2,000 baht. Nice big bed. I get a sofa because it's an upgraded room sea facing so i can see the the beach there's, there's some bars with some music but it's quite good double glazing so you don't hear much um i tend to book it again and again and again i i, I was staying in blackwoods on soy eight brilliant hotel new but it's always full when they put their prices up now so it's kind of out of my price range i i, I stay in a you know budget hotels um but the example I'm going to give you is one time I thought I'm going to try something different and I'm not going to name the hotel. You know, the reason why here in Thailand, I live here and you know, the deflammatory rules they have and you know, all the rest of it. Um, so there was a hotel right on the seafront about halfway down the beach road and they were advertising rooms at the time at 900 bar and the cheapest room I could get was about 1400 bar in the hotel where I was staying at that time. Cause I, I've, I was staying in another hotel um, and I've changed over now to the flipper lodge and um it looked okay. You know, the pictures looked okay. I looked at a YouTube video. It looked okay. And uh, it was infested with rats. You know, it was horrible. Uh, and when I said it was infested with rats, what would happen is the, the actual building on the seafront, well, I had a sea facing room. Okay. The room was okay, you know. Um, but what would happen is you had to go up one of the side soys to get you, the entrance wasn't from the beach road. Okay. You had to go up one of the soys and then the entrance was kind of to the left. And the reception was there. And when you got your key, you had to kind of walk through a garden. It was railed off from the soy, from the road. So what would happen is you pick your key up and you'd probably go around, I don't know, 100 feet through this kind of garden with a snaky path. Uh, you know, it wasn't a particularly nice garden, but they'd made an effort to try and make it something. There was a water fountain and everything. But at night, it was just rats everywhere. And where my motorbike was parked, right next to the reception, I used to jangle my keys because the first night I went there, I put my torch light on because I couldn't see. And there were like six or seven big rats crawling over the wheels of the motorbikes and shit. And I hate rats, right? And then if that wasn't bad enough, when you get to the actual where your room is, I was on the second floor and I had to I had to walk up some stairs, which is still outside. So when you're walking along the corridor, it's, I'm trying to describe how it is now. So when you walk along the corridor, it's not enclosed. So all the doors are here, okay? Uh, but to this side, you've got a small kind of 
uh, wall uh, but you can see how it's all out this side is all open okay so you're walking down a corridor this side is all open and then the room doors are here so as i walked up the first flight of concrete stairs there's a little hole uh, and it's an outlet for i guess it's a, a, a toilet's overflow and as i walk up i look what's that there's a mouse just sitting there with its head sticking out of this drain out of this pipe out the wall it's just looking at me and then it went back in and uh, i only stayed there two nights but when i what i used to do when i opened the door to the to the um to the room i used to make a lot of noise so i'd rattle i'd rattle the door handle and then i'd open the door and i'd jingle my keys and then i'd put the light on because if there had been a rat in there which i didn't see any rats in the room but if i'd just walked in and seen one it'd have freaked me out and i would have had to go right then and then and sometimes i got back to the room at 2 2 30 in the morning the last thing i want to do is go off and start hunting for a for a room but you know it's just so it's a good example you know if it's if you if you book a hotel room and you think yep this is a nice hotel it's clean staff are okay price is right just i'll just go back to it you know because look what happened to me and you know i, I just hate rats really hate them um Okay, so you're talking about the guys who leave the shitty comments. You, uh, backhead, you said attention seekers. Yeah, well, they don't get much attention from me because once they say something stupid, that's it. They're banned. Uh, Super bro. Is Thailand okay for younger folk or is it mostly for older folk? No, it's brilliant. It's a party town. It's a, no, it's brilliant for all ages. You know, you can be a child with your parents. Uh, there's lots of groups of guys who come over here and girls who are in their 20s, early 20s, they have a ball. Of, you know, if you've never been here before, you know, Thailand has got fantastic nightclubs, bars. I mean, if you're a young person, there's so much to do here. If you're an older person, there's so much to do here. That It literally has something for everybody. What I'd suggest for you, I don't know how old you are. You didn't say how old you are. I'd just go on to Google and everything that you're interested in put in with bangkok at the end so nightclubs in bangkok and you'll see videos and photographs things to do for younger people and yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant if you get a chance to come here come but behave yourself right um herbert um hey peter glad to catch you live thank you very much for your very generous super chat again you always do that and i do appreciate i know i know i always say it uh, uh, but i sincerely do thank you and uh you should be coming out here soon i guess and we'll catch up and have a bit of lunch again okay thanks um gravel billy one uh you're so funny with that i know also why be stupid in someone's life i don't really get that you are so funny with that with what uh, i know also why be stupid in someone's life I'm not really sure what you mean there gravel billy one maybe you could rewrite that one i'll rewrite it again uh toby price why uh why do all the horror stories about frangs come from patia and phuket do you think these locations attract a different type of frang no um I think it happens all over Thailand. I mean, I've heard stories from Isan, you know, uh, Royette and uh, Sisiket and Udang Thani and Udong Rochitani and, you know, everywhere. But ma mainly, you're right, they come from places like um, Phuket, Pattaya and Bangkok. And there, there's a simple reason for it is because that's where the girls are. And where the girls are, you're going to get a lot of guys go there, aren't they? Um, Pattaya, like I've always said, Pattaya is to um, working girls what las vegas in america is to gambling it's the same thing but las vegas for gambling and patio is for something else um so yeah most of the stories because guys will come out to patio maybe they've not been there before or they've been out here once or twice and and what happens is they they meet a girl who's different uh you know they believe the stories and they try to turn it into a relationship and it all goes pear-shaped and uh, eventually they decide to put it, uh, write it out in a word document and send it to me and i'm, I'm very glad they do um Right, Mazza. Haha, the weather is actually quite pleasant. Sun is shining. Last minute, weekend away with the missus. Good. It's terrible when you go away in the UK and it just rains for the whole weekend, isn't it? Bangkok Jimmy, how are you doing? Uh, good to see you. Uh, Hobson's Choice. Lack of education manners. Uh, you're talking about the person who came in earlier. Lack of education manners. Lonely, probably, and no etiquette. I mean, I, I've gone on, not live stream so much, but I've, I've seen things that I didn't like and I've written things i'm not a troll as such but we will do it from time to time don't we? we'll write a message that you know you, you see something you don't like them or you don't like their content or something and you you put something negative i'll tell you the ones that make me laugh are um the ones that make me laugh is because you know the stories i read out they're all sent in right and the only changes i make sometimes i'll get a story that's so badly written and i mean spelling wise maybe they've done it on the phone there's no capitals there's no full stops lots and lots of spelling mistakes I'll run it through chat GDP, GPT, and I'll tell it, I'll say, 
rewrite this story with correct grammar, correct spelling, but keep the story the same. And that's what it does. It rewrites it, and it's just easier for me to edit and read out. And um, But the, the guys who make me laugh really, boy, it puts a smile on my face, is when, you know, a story will come in by email, I read it. Yep, this is fine. Sometimes I have to change some of the words. You know, some guys are kind of graphic, what they're explaining, and I have to change certain words, like aerobics is a good example, okay? You, everybody knows what, you know, went back to the room for aerobics. You know what that means, right? And there's a lot of kind of things you have to be careful of with YouTube. But they're all, they're all for the most part, uh, genuine stories. Well, they're all, genu they're all genuinely sent to me, so I'm not writing these stories. Um, I'm, I don't know, maybe there's the odd one or two that, gets through that isn't genuine or it's exaggerated but they for the most part they sound to me pretty genuine uh, and i'll get people write to me and they say oh i didn't like the stories this week can you change them and make do this or oh they're all doom and gloom stories or last week the stories were all nice i like the crash and burn story and it's like well hang on a minute i'm not you know it's not like i i'm putting quill to paper and i'm kind of coming i'm not you know um i'm trying to think i'm not shakespeare for instance re reborn Shakespeare I'm not making these stories you know people send them to me and all I can do is read out what they send me so I mean it's pointless to kind of complain and say uh, or the other one like you look at the comments today people say oh I didn't like the second story it was really boring or I didn't like the first story it was really boring you know I mean hey get over it we'll, we'll move on to the next one that's why I have time stamps so if you're listening to a story and you think this is boring just move to the next one right um super bro are there any big foot sore squash uh creatures in the thailand area no I, I don't i haven't got a clue what you're talking about there um right john what is your thoughts with the dual pricing in thailand for foreigners don't get me off on this one so on the video i've made recently i talked about this uh dual pricing so i've got to be really careful here because people have a go at me if i give my own personal opinions even though i'm allowed to have a personal opinion like anybody else um so if you don't know what dual pricing is, what happens in Thailand a lot of the time, and I'll give you a really good example here, which I put in a video today. If you're a foreigner, normally you'll pay a lot more than a Thai person pays to get into a, um, like a museum or you go to a tourist attraction, some caves or a national park, and they have a fee. And there'll always be one fee for Thais. I say always, not always, I'll tell you another example. There'll always be... Uh, a higher fee that's most of the time most of the time there always be a higher fee for foreigners and a lower fee for ties now for example i'll give you a good example now so when you go to coal cement you have to pay a tax as soon as you land and, and what that tax is for is supposedly the upkeep of the island you know the roads the sewerage the fresh water everything okay everybody who goes on the island pays it regardless it goes into a pot and they use it for whatever okay now i was with a thai person a thai national and I had the, the standard fee for a foreigner is 200 baht. The standard fee for a Thai is 40 baht. And you'll find this wherever you go. You know, you go to a national park and it will be 50 baht for the Thai and 250 baht for the foreigner. So there's two arguments to this. Okay, on one camp, people will say, well, I think it's fair because a lot of foreigners earn a lot more than the Thais do. And it goes towards the upkeep of the park and it pays the salary of the rangers. And yeah, I, I agree with it. And, you know, at the end of the day, 250 baht, even though it's a lot more than the ties paying its pennies really compared to our money back home so that's one kind of that's one way of looking at it isn't it but the other way of looking at it is you know um some other people will say it's a form of racism because you know you're you're sort of saying if you're not Thai, you pay more than anybody else so i kind of tend to i don't really give an opinion on what i think these days i used to um, I've just kind of accepted it now. But it, sometimes you can get lucky. I mean, one thing I didn't know, and one of the bonuses of being older, there isn't many, but one of them here in Thailand is, and I've only just found this out recently, if you're over 60, you've got to ask, because they won't tell you. If you're over 60, you get heavily discounted on a lot of these um, entrance fees. And I'll give you an example. I went with a Thai person to the King Power Mahakan Skywalk, 79 floors up, glass floor, walked on it, crap my pants but anyway that's another story and uh the, it's quite expensive to get in there you got in the elevator 79 floors and you know do your thing as it were and i went with a thai national a thai person so the fee on this skywalk to go out on this it, it's um 850 baht regardless of whether you're thai or you're a foreigner 850 baht everybody pays that right so i went up and luckily for me i didn't know this a young girl on there she said um and you'll hear me talk about this in the video that's been released to members be released to everybody else on tuesday 
she said, how old are you, sir? And I said, I'm, I've just turned 64, but at the time I said, I'm 63. And she said, oh, okay, it's 350 baht for you then. And I'm like, oh, why? And she says, oh, because you're over 60. And the Thai person had to pay 850. So that's the first time ever in approximately 30 years that I've ever seen a foreigner pay less than a Thai person. So the whole point of that waffling on story was this. If you're going to a lot of places to visit, caves, museums, the Grand Palace, the Leaning Buddha, they don't all do it, but it's worth you saying, you, you need your idea. It's worth you pulling out a copy of your passport on your phone or whatever and say, look, I'm 60, whatever you are, 61, 62. Is there a senior discount? And a lot of the time there is, and it's quite a hefty discount. I saved 500 baht on the entrance fee to that skywalk. Uh, a lot of the time they won't tell you, they just take the money, you know, so it's your responsibility to actually ask them. Right, uh, Danny Rubin, Danny Rubinetti, uh, it always takes me a few seconds to get the ring going on it. Uh, you didn't tell me if you're Italian. I think that's an Italian name, isn't it? I am trying to avoid Songkran, Madness 2 here in Bangkok, yeah. Um, you'll be surprised how many people who live here don't actually participate in it, and, and I'm one of them. Uh, for which I've already explained. If you want to know, you have to go back to the beginning of the video. Um, Speedy Panda, uh, Superbro, yes, yeah, Sympatia, and his name is Trevor. Okay. All right. I didn't understand the question. You did. Okay, good. Um, another good uh, channel in Patia is Everything Patia. If you've watched every one of his videos, you'll know everything about Patia. Uh, you know, gentlemen's clubs, bars, the whole lot. Uh, you never see the guy's face, though. I've seen it once. He was in a hotel going up in the elevator that was mirrored, and uh, he'd had his camera but he actually caught his face. Um, right. Um, well, I'll leave that up there for a minute. Right, Gravel Billy one Okay, you called uh, you called the basher a dickhead, and it made me laugh. And why do people go on your live and make themselves look stupid? Okay, I've got you. I'm, I'm with you, Gravel Billy. Okay. Um, right, Speedy Panda. Uh Franco, sorry, so I, okay, <laughs> all right, let's move away from that. Perbert, um, Peter, how long did it take you from start to finish to plan your move, visas, getting rid of crap, et cetera? Well, I sold a house. I sold a quite, I had a nice house in the UK because when I worked abroad I, I, uh, in the hotel industry, I was housed by the hotel and I was able to save most of my salary. And when I went back, I bought a nice house for cash. It was a big four-bedroom house. Uh, but in answer to your question, not long, not long, because I knew Thailand very well. Um, so what happened is I came out in October, what are we now, 2020, 2022 it was I came out in October. And um, what I'd been doing, it was my wife, not me. My wife wanted to kind of finish it. You know, we'd been friends. We're still friends today, actually. We're still friends now. But the kind of, uh, we were living under one roof as friends, you know, and that's not a marriage, is it? And it got to the point where she said, look, you know, I just think it'd be better if we did our own thing. And I kind of agreed. And I made a whole one hour video about it. You can go back and look at why I decided to live in Thailand at age 62. Um, had over 100,000 viewings now. But basically, not. it didn't take me long at all because I knew this was happening. So I got rid of all the stuff that I knew I definitely wouldn't need. But because I knew my wife was moving into a, I sold the house and, most of the funds I um, gave to her to buy another house because I've got a few rental properties that I kept and she had that. We just worked out. We didn't use lawyers, solicitors. We didn't pay anybody. We didn't fight. We didn't go to court. We just sat down like two adults and we went through everything. And, you know, we just agreed who was having what. Uh, and we parted as friends. And it was a, it was quite sad, but we're still friends today. Um, but it didn't take long. But what happened with me is I came over in October uh, and my... I'd had an agree, agree. I don't know how it is in America. It's a lot faster, I think. But house selling in the UK is like pulling out fingers, be, fingernails, because it can people can pull out at the last minute. Uh, you know, the solicitors take their time, lawyers, and um, I was very lucky. It went through. I had a few people who agreed to buy it, and then they dropped out. Hang on, I'm getting cold now. Um, they dropped out. But in actual fact, in October of twenty-two, I booked a trip. I thought well, there's no point hanging around here. I might as well go to Thailand and let my hair down a little bit. And, you know, when it's close to this house selling, go back. So I booked a trip in October 22 uh, for about a month. And I was going to come back um, for Christmas with the children and everything. And then once the house sale was going to go through February, March. And then I said to my wife, because I booked the trip to come out here for October, November. And I said, shall I come back to December? So I said to my wife, Do you want, shall I come back for December? And she said, it's up to you. And I said, yeah, I know it's up to me and we're splitting up and everything, but 
would you like me to come back for Christmas? You know, kids and all that. And she's like, well, it's up to you. And that straight away told me she didn't really want me there for Christmas. So I, I made up my mind and decided to stay out here. And uh, while I was in Thailand visiting, I actually arranged my long-term visa. I found this apartment, which is great and cheap and um, for the area. And all the little things you have to do, I'd actually arrange before I went back to sell my house. And when it was coming to the completion stage to get rid of the house, I flew back. I was in England, I think, three weeks from the day I landed to the day I was at Heathrow Airport staying overnight. And... Um, you know, I, I got rid of, mo I'd say 90% of the things went to her because, you know, things like lawnmowers, uh, garden furniture. I mean, she had a house, right? So that all went to her, printers, uh, my computer system. I can't remember what I did with that now. Um, I can't, I think I'll give it to one of the kids. I don't know. But in answer to your question, it, it went through really, really quick. And, uh, you know, I look back sometimes about my life in the UK and it is sad and, you know, I feel a bit sorry for my ex-wife because if I'd maybe been a better husband, probably this wouldn't have happened. But you can't look back and dwell on the past, can you? You have to look forward and just make the best. You can't change the past. What's done is done. As an old saying, you can't. Uh, there's no point crying over spilt milk, uh, and it's absolutely true. And that's how I my outlook in life. But still, you do have flashbacks, and you do remember certain things. And you know, I I am very. Um, I do I do have a lot of sympathy for people if I see someone's down on their luck or they're not having. Um, like, like my family, for instance, I just feel if I'd been a little bit kind of nicer, then maybe, uh, you know, things would have worked out. But I'm getting very personal now, so I'll move on. Right, Enzo. Um, hi, Peter. Enzo from Melbourne, Australia, sends greetings. Hi, Enzo. How are you doing on this Saturday afternoon? Very hot. Right, Paul Harrison, good afternoon. Uh, Barry Lim, just saw your new video on Rabbit Card discounts, etc. Uh, good work. Well, I won't talk about it again because I've kind of mentioned it a few times. And uh, I'm glad you watched the video, so you're obviously a member. But I will release that video to everybody on Tuesday, okay? Can't believe I've been going an hour and a half. God, as long as the comments keep going, I'll go a while longer because I'm not doing a lot today. And it, you can't really see it, but it's so hot out there today. I'll go dark again, look. But it looks nice when you look at it like that. But here it's hot. Right. Um, outside in. Yep, I think they have their own version of Bigfoot, like Vietnam has its rock apes. Okay. Uh, you see, when I get comments, like I, I kind of ignored it when uh, the person wrote it there, a bro or something. What, what was it? Um, cool bro or something like that. Because sometimes when you're on your own, you're reading comments and you're trying to talk and you're trying to keep up and everything. You read a comment and you can't tell. You think, well, is that, is that a joke or is he taking the mic? Is he taking the mic? Or... So I kind of just, I don't want to say something stupid and upset. So I've done that before. Somebody has, has made a joke and I haven't got it. And I've said, look, if you don't like it, piss off sort of thing. And uh, he's written back to me and uh, I've kind of apologized, but he's never come back on the stream again. So I've got to be very careful. Uh, Hobson's Choice. You didn't read my story I sent a few months ago, unfortunately, because you said needed a fair bit of correcting i have nearly finished a rewrite an update to send hope you'll get it on so look let me tell you something hobbs's choice if if i get a story in i'd say 99 out of 100 i'll read out the only reason i won't read out a story is a because it's so graphical that even if i make changes it's still bad or if i have to cut some of it out it's so much cut out that there's no story there anymore or I'll get a five or six page story and the spelling is just so atrocious that it would take me two hours to literally rewrite it because G chat GPT doesn't write it the way it should be, okay? Doesn't correct it the way it should be. So if you've rewritten it, the chances are I probably will read it out and I do appreciate that you've taken the time to rewrite it, but try to keep it, uh, you know, don't, don't go too um blue as we used to say in the old days uh, with, the, with the language. Right, Toby Price, Cole Cement must be making a fortune for entry uh, with all the Chinese day trippers, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, to, you imagine 200 baht a person, and, and there's literally thousands of people going through that island, you know. Um, Dave Val, uh, pro tip for bad motels, close the toilet seat and put your suitcase on it to weigh it down. It makes it hard for the rats to enter the room via the toilet. That's a good, a good, a horrible thought, but a good tip. Uh, true story again. I had a friend who, uh, I've never been to Vietnam, but he told me, and he told me this story in 1997 or 98. So it, we're going back to probably, uh, it probably happened to him around 1995. So he went to a little hotel in Vietnam somewhere. Don't ask me where, I don't know. And um, 
He said he checked into the room. The room looked quite okay, no problems. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the times when you check into a hotel, the first thing you do is you go and use a bathroom, right? So the seat was down. He lifted the seat, and there was a rat there looking at him. And I said to him, what did you do? He says, oh, well, I just flushed it, you know, but I, I couldn't have stayed in the same room, you know. Uh, that's a good trick. That's a good tip. But, you know, if you're staying in a – if you are staying in a hotel where you've got to put your suitcase on the toilet, you've got to think, am I making the right choices in life here? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, maybe I should have upped my budget a little bit. Um, that talking of rats, I mean, you know, I, I know it's a big difference here in Thailand now. You, you do see rats occasionally, but I remember walking down Sukhumvit Road, you know, anywhere between, say, well, e everywhere in Thailand, but especially uh, around the Nana area. At night, you'd see hundreds of cockroaches, big cockroaches running around on the streets. You know, you sit at a restaurant and there'd be, you'd see the odd one run through. And there was a lot of them, you know, and you'd see rats every single night, you know, coming from different. I mean, they weren't running across your table or anything like that. But you'd just see some movement out your corner. Your eye, look down and there was a rat in a corner somewhere, you know, and there was a lot. But I've noticed now I hardly ever see cockroaches at all. I'm not complaining about it. You do still see the odd one, and they're big. But they used to be all over the place, you know, and there's a lot less. I don't know if the government put into some kind of program to get rid of them or, or it's just cleaner here now. What it is, I, I've seen rats since I've been back here, but they're in kind of clusters around rubbish. When you see rubbish on the street, you stand there long enough, you'll see rats. Uh, but, I, you know, where I stay, they fumigate the place every month. I hear them. I look out the window because I hear the noise. A guy's got a strap thing, a tank on his back, and he's, you know, they're all around the basement and stuff. So, you know, touch wood, not yet. Uh, Mark K, uh, maybe everything Pat here doesn't show his face because he hasn't got a work permit. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Super bro, do you ever feel self-conscious while filming in public? Very, very. I, I don't really like doing it, but I, because I've got a channel, I do it. Uh, and it depends where I am. Like I did a video, we actually got a good uh, lot of views. I was surprised actually. I filmed the MBK Center because they have a lot of fake products there, good fake products. You know, you can get Rolex watches, you can get designer shirts, and you know, pretty really good copies. And I didn't feel uncomfortable in there because I was. It's thousands of people in there, but I'm walking through with a selfie stick. I'm talking to the camera, and I didn't feel out of place or uncomfortable because you know the shopkeepers they used to. A lot of people film the MBK center. I mean, I was going through videos today and I seen a younger guy saying, Hey, this is a great place for fake stuff. And you know, it's, um, you know, you do the, so a place like the MBK center, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Um, I'm just trying to think where I do feel kind of a bit conscious of it. Yeah. I mean, somewhere like, um, you know, when I, if I'm in a kind of a bar area, you know, and there's guys and girls working because the girls don't really like a camera stuck in the face. And Patty is a different, um, story because they're so used to it and you know some of those girls are down there for years I think they've almost given up trying to hide their um, to be discreet so they kind of tend to you do see them look away but when you go to areas around here and there's girls you walk, for instance I did a video once where I was walking through soy cowboy and nearly every girl turns away and that's when you start to feel a bit uncomfortable I've never gone and stuck the camera in people's faces um, and when I have filmed people, like an example, I, I did a B-roll. What a B-roll is, you know, when I tell stories, I have a background video. So I did one where I was walking down the beach road in Patty, and there was, and there was a woman with a, you know, a, a traditional straw hat, and she was chopping up watermelon. So I can't remember what it was. And uh, for the B-roll, I thought, I'll oh, just film that for a minute. That's a nice touch of Thailand, you know, a traditionally uh, looking woman in a straw hat cutting up fruit. Uh, but I didn't just go up and stick the camera there. I just because I, I delete the sound on it because it's background video. So I just said, as I was pan around, I said, okay. And she just smiled and said, yeah. So I never poke the camera in people's faces. But yeah, from time to time, I do feel uncomfortable. It's not an easy thing to do. You know, when you, you know, when you're, when people are looking at you and you're, you're going around pointing a camera at them, a lot of people don't like it, you know. And what I do a lot of the time is that I've done some videos where I'm walking along Sukhumvert. So I'll, I'll go from Asok to Soy 33 and I've got this little camera and I'm just holding it here as I'm walking and that's how you get the background videos but you know if I see somebody walking towards me and he's he's looking like I really don't like this camera then I'll slowly turn it towards the road so I can continue filming he'll go by and then I'll swing it back and you'll notice when I'm filming sometimes a camera will move and that's the reason why uh Anders Bergman how you doing good to see you in the stream Scar Sandy, how are you doing? Uh, Jay, great to be back in Thailand after a two-year absence. Hot, though, isn't it, Jay? Very hot. Whereabouts are you, Patia? 
Uh, Simon Yee, but why go to Pattaya from Bangkok when there's plenty of girls in Bangkok? It's just a different vibe down there, Simon. I, I don't do the... I, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't take out bar girls uh, any... any, any I, I just don't do it. Uh, it's very, very expensive now, and because I live here, and it's it, you know you could do it any day, I just don't do it. Um, but you're saying, why go, why go to Pattaya from Bangkok? Okay, number one, Pattaya is so much cheaper than Bangkok. You know, I'll give you an example. I drink in a go, -go bar here. You're looking at 180, 200 baht, 220 baht for a small bottle of Heineken. You can get that same drink in Pattaya, 50 baht, 60 baht, no more than 70, no more than, say, 80, okay? So it's drinks very cheap, food's very cheap. And there's just a completely different vibe down there. In Bangkok, because it's capital city, you do have pockets of areas, but you have to go and look for them. So you've got, like, Nana Plaza, RCA City, mostly for ties. You've got Soy Cowboy, and you've got some little bar complexes. But you have to know where to go. And, you know, there's a lot of guys there because it's a city. Uh, and there's a lot of expats live in Bangkok who use these outlets as well. But in Pattaya... Um, it's just saturated with bars and girls, isn't it? And, it, you know, people walk around in shorts and vests. It's cheap. The girls are, I think they're much more friendlier in Patty than they are here in Bangkok. They're a lot more hardcore here in Bangkok. So there's so, there's so many uh, reasons, Simon, why people decide to go to Patty. I know guys who fly, a lot of guys who fly into Thailand, they don't even come to Bangkok because the old airport at Dong Wong, you had to come to Bangkok and then you go down to Pattaya. Um, but Sawanaporn Airport, I, I won't call it the new airport because it's not new anymore, the late, later airport, Sawanaporn Airport, is halfway to Patty already, and there's buses go every half an hour or so. Uh, a taxi's about 1,000 baht, 1,200 baht. So I know guys who fly in, jump on a bus, and they're in Patty in, in like an hour or uh, something like that. Um, Jason Finch, uh, Peter, you should go and have some fun for Songkran. Well, that's the whole point of it, Jason. I, I kind of explained earlier. For me, it isn't fun anymore because I've been doing it for a lot of years, uh, and it just it just doesn't cut it anymore. I just don't enjoy it. It's not something I want to go out and do, and I'm not going to go out just because I should go out because it's Songkran. You know, it's like it just doesn't do anything for me anymore, uh, and I'm not filming it because there's hundreds of YouTubers here, younger guys will be filming it, and I haven't got anything to bring to the party. You know what I mean? Right, Simon Yee, some Franks behave like idiots because they because they think they are superior. Um, maybe, but some of them, some of them, a lot of them are just <laughs> brain dead. I think you know. Uh, Chris, Ty, everything Patty is okay. Some decent contributions to help newbies. However, sometimes he comes across as a know it better than everyone. People have said that to me, Chris. If you've got a YouTube channel, um, people come and watch you because they want to learn stuff for whatever reason or they just want to hear what you've got to say. But you'll get people come along and they just don't like you for whatever reason. And I've had people say, oh, you know, I've, I've read on other forums, oh, Peter from Thailand Band is a big head and know it all. He thinks he knows everything sort of thing. And you know, that's how some people think. And what you're saying there, um, you know, you could say that about any YouTuber because once you're in a public forum, people are going to say nasty things about you. And uh, I, I don't for a minute think that I know everything about Thailand, but there's not much I don't honestly don't know about. I'm not talking about locations. I'm talking about a way of life out here. Um, but still, I'll, I'll get criticized, you know, like like just like everybody else does. Um, you've got to learn when you've got a YouTube channel, you've got to be pretty thick skinned because I used to get very upset in the early days and I used to try and write to guys and explain, uh, but people don't want to listen. When you get kind of trolls and armchair critics and things, they just want to, you know, upset you. Right, Jason Finch, Peter, what, what's the girls doing for Songkran Day? Um, not sure what you mean by the girls. You mean like bar girls? Same as everybody else, I guess. Th throw water at each other. Hobson's Choice, if I look back at the past, I'd go crazy, hence coming here for a fresh challenge and try to enjoy my life more. Yeah, absolutely. Right, is that El Elliot Motola, is it? Hi from Miami, first time I found you and a subscriber, thank you. Question, not speaking about bar girls, but is it hard to find a nice, decent girl in Thailand? Uh, thank you and I'm glad I found you. It's a good question, Elliot. So in a nutshell, yes, if you don't live here, because um, there's a lot of beautiful women in Thailand like there is all over the world, okay? Uh, and they are available, not all of them. You know, it's a big mistake. People think they come here and they can buy any Thai girl. You can't, okay? A lot of guys come here for a holiday for two, three weeks, and they want to meet a nice Thai girl to date. But if she's a nice Thai girl, she's not going to date someone for two or three weeks and sleep with them, is she? But otherwise, she wouldn't be a nice Thai girl. So I've, just from experience and looking around with friends and other people, I tend to think that um, most successful relationships are with between Thais and guys who live here or spend most of the time, nine to 10 months a year here, or, or they've taken the girl back home, and that's not quite as 
good as being here in their own culture. Uh, people wrongly assume that all Thai girls want to marry a foreigner and be taken off to America or England, wherever, and they don't. They don't want to leave their country. Their family is here. It's a great country. Why would they want to leave? You know, we come here for that reason. Um, it's not impossible, but I've just found, you know, guys who come out here, you're looking for a nice Thai girl. Uh, you know, you've got t uh, t the dating sites like Tinder and Badoo and all the rest of it. Um, there's a lot of girls on there are working girls, scammers, lady boys. They're just looking for more money. Uh, there are nice girls on there as well, but the nicer girls on there, you'll, they'll tend to be over 30. And in Thailand, for whatever reason, once a girl hits 30, they're kind of not that attractive to other Thai, girl, uh, Thai guys. Uh, you know, in the West, a girl, a, woman, a girl can be 45 and, you know, she's still marrying material, isn't she? If she looks right and she behaves herself and, you know, you, you'd consider marrying if she was the right girl. But it doesn't work like that here. If a, once a girl hits 30, she's considered old and Thai guys are generally not interested. So with a lot of Thai, Thai women who are nice Thai women who are genuinely looking for a partner, they might already have a kid, um, you know, divorced, whatever. You'll find that a lot of them, they're looking for stability in their lives. You know, there's no welfare system as such. So they don't want to grow old and be by themselves. You know, families look after each other here. Um, but if there's a woman here, a Thai girl, and she wants to meet somebody, she's not going to waste her time with somebody who's coming for two weeks or a month, is she? Because she's looking for a serious relationship. She's probably had a lot of guys mess her about in the past. So she's put herself on Tinder and she's, say, 38. She's got a kid of whatever age, but she's looking for somebody stable. Um, I just think you're going to find it very, very difficult. And if you want a girlfriend for fun, there's nothing wrong with coming to somewhere like Patia, taking a girl out of a bar for a week and saying, look, I want you to show me around. I want to go to the islands with you. I want to you know have dinner with you every night i want to, you to share my hotel for the week and i'll look after you uh, financially there's nothing wrong with that you know you have a holiday girlfriend but at least you know where you stand uh, and a lot of people have a lot of fun like that um Duff, duffler again bangkok's weather forecast is only going to get hotter over the next 10 days there, we're, there's a weather warning uh now in uh, heat wave coming at the moment um thank god my air con conditions working um right simon Yee, doesn't dual pricing apply everywhere in the world it i don't know about the rest of the world but not in the uk we don't have any dual pricing whatsoever uh sandra clay gain is it happy birthday again peter hope you had some fun had a great time sandra thank you very much went down to coast uh soaked up some rays as they say uh it just ended too soon had a one night in rayong that was a lot of fun as well quiet though uh, Seamus Dr. You haven't seen you for a long time, Seamus. How are you doing? Hi, Peter. It's been a while since I caught your stream. This is an ad hoc one, uh, Seamus. Don't normally do one on a Saturday afternoon, but it's hot. It's on crown. I've decided to stay home. Already released two videos today. Um, Explorer, thank you very much for that. Soy Dog. Uh, hi, Peter. They have closed the bars in Udung Tani today for song crown. Never heard of this happening before. Have they got the bars open in Bangkok? Yeah, they have. They, the bars are open here. I did read an article about one of the higher uppers in the government. How you say one of the ministers was suggesting that they do uh, not serve alcohol on Songkran because they have trouble people drink and drive, and uh, you know because the Thai celebrate it's their New Year. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, yes, Bangkok they are serving alcohol. As, as far as I'm aware, they were last night. I haven't been out today. Maybe somebody put, uh, can let me know. Uh, Super bro, what kind of wristwatch are you wearing? It's a genuine fake Rolex. Uh, I bought this in when well, I was in the MBK Center, and uh, I just think it's nice. You know, it actually keeps really good time. And uh, the thing about it is, it's got perpetual motion. It's not got a battery in it, so you can see the second hand going around there. It's not very clear, is it? Um, but I hate the the Rolexes which have got the the glass in them and everything. I've got a regular watch. I just I wear it for fun, you know. I'm, I'm not trying to show off. And it's an it's I really love a real one. That's this is the one I'd buy if I could afford a real one. But they're about eight thousand pounds, ten thousand uh, dollars. Generally, I, I've got a tag. That's my everyday watch. There, that was about sixty thousand baht, a present from the wife actually. Uh, that's a good watch as well. But I do I do like these. Uh, you know, they're a bit superficial, aren't they? And a lot, you know, people, uh, you know, they kind of tend to think you're showing off if you wear a fake Rolex. But I, I actually like them. I think it looks nice. Wish I could afford the real one. Right. Um, yeah, that's the other one. Go for damn well spotted. That's that's this one. You got it uh, right on the money, as it were. Another simple one. But I keep that. It was a present from my ex-wife. So, you know, it's got some meaning to it. Um, Right, Toby Price. Uh, twice here in Thailand at the family house, I found a frog in the toilet. 
ne nearly crap myself. Oh, a frog's not too bad, is it? But they come through the system. I'll tell you something I watched the other day, and I hope if you're eating now, I'd kind of turn the sound down for 30 seconds or a minute. Oh, you know, in the countryside here, they, they do eat rats, and um, but they're field rats. And uh, I went up to, I went recently to Lopbury, but not where the monkeys are. I went 30 mile north and I was in an environment with a lot of ties where they were cooking in a, in a house in the middle of the countryside. So I was out of town. It was surrounded by, by rice fields. It was a Thai family and uh, they were, they, I didn't see the actual rat, but I've seen the rat meat and they put it on skewers and they, they cook it, which is, I, I didn't try it. If that's, you know, I really didn't try it. Um, but I can understand they get the, the value of the meat from it. You know, it looked like liver, to be honest with you. Because I looked at it, I said, oh, moo, which is pork. And they were like, yeah, yeah. It's... But they didn't want to tell me. But in the end, I found out it was rat. And um, that wasn't too bad. But the one that really made me like feel like vomiting, right? So if you're eating, please look away or turn the sound down. So I watched a Vietnam uh it was about what people eat in Vietnam, and there was a video where they were preparing the food and what they were doing, and I'm not making this up right, they were getting dead rats, right? So you've got a rat, complete fur inside, hadn't been touched, just dead, right? They put it in sticky rice, wrap it in a kind of like a, a almost like a coat of sticky rice, so only its tail and its head is showing. They put it on a heat, cook it, and then they eat it like that. Oh, uh, if I was in a situation where I was in prison, they said, you either eat that or starve to death. I honestly think I would starve to death. I really do. Wow. Right. Jay, what's true? I've never known it so hot. Do you know what? In the, it's supposed to be the British that talk about the weather, isn't it? Um, when we had the, in December, the year before, it was nice and cool here. You'd go out in the evenings, not cool like, like in Europe, but you'd go out in the evenings and it was, oh, this is nice, bit of air and it's not too hot. But this uh high season december it was hot you know we had two brilliant weeks where the temperature was really good you know really good it was a pleasure to walk outside but it was it was just hot right down the man uh there are bad people in every country and these people travel so you get idiots in thailand from around the world yeah you do it's kind of you know i get embarrassed if, if you get a foreigner who's acting like a an idiot in thailand even though he's nothing to do with me and I don't know him, but this Thai is watching this. I, I feel embarrassed. I do as a foreigner watching another foreigner. I told you the story years ago. There was a, a white guy on, on a bridge, uh, European. I don't know where he's from. He was on a bridge over Sukhumvit and he had a pot in front of him and he had a sign, need money for airfare. You know, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, how low do you get to get to that point? Um, uh, Stephen, I won't put your comment up there, but I, I don't, uh, I'm not approved. I just, I'm not into it. I tried it once when I was a, you know, when I was about 15, 16. Um, I, I, it didn't do anything for me. So no, no. Um, Shinobu, I hope I pronounced that right. Any idea why YouTube unsubscribes me from many Thailand-based channels? It's very frustri frustrating. Seems I have to resubscribe every time. Um, no idea. You know, I mean, sometimes what happens with youtube I, I i lose subscribers all the time and you know i get guys write to me and say why did you unsubscribe me you know me i've been contributing for a year i always come in the live stream and i'm like i didn't unsubscribe you, you know and people don't believe you but i've got no idea the only thing i can think of is if you duplicate comment content or you uh if you're just a viewer kind of thing subscribing um do you use bad language um do you, is there something in their terms that you do i, I honestly don't know youtube's a funny place uh, and not always in a great way jay in Pattaya, not sure i can cope with song crime. i might have to move up to bangkok well jay the good news if you don't want to cope with it in bangkok uh it'll all be gone and done and dusted up by tuesday here the last night will be monday it'll be it's saturday today it's full on i can hear the music yeah i can hear it uh There'll be four or five hundred people in Soy Four now throwing water over each other. I guarantee it, as there is every year. Um, Perbet, uh, when does the mongrin end in Thailand? Knowing expats in Thailand, what age does the party end? I'm not sure what you mean by that, to be honest with you. Do you mean like guys, do they get to a point in their lives where they think, well, that's it, no more? Um, I'd guess around 50, uh, but I know you're well into it, right? Uh, Ray Ross, hey. Peter, finally catching a live stream. Uh, put that up there. Finally catching a live stream. Retire in September. Which agent do you suggest in Patia? Okay, so I've moved agents, right? Honestly, guys, no backhanders. The guys, 
who I recommend for the agent I recommend in Pattaya now, they can get you tied driving license. I don't mean you don't buy them, okay? They facilitate it, but they can help you with tied driving licenses. They can help you. Um, I will tell you who they are. They've just, when I bought my car, it was in Simon's company's name. I bought it off my friend Simon. I never changed it for whatever reason. And it's quite complicated to change it because it was in a company name. And But I've done it all now. But they they helped me with all the paperwork. So they've, they've managed to change my uh, car into my own name. They've helped me with uh, motorcycle and car driving license, uh, long-term visas, retirement visas, spouse visas, whatever you need. They're really, really good. And the guy's English and his wife's Thai, but she speaks very good English. So the, I, I now recommend um, is Mark and Pom, and they're in in Soy Six. I can't, I can't remember what the company name. I think it's. Um, let me just grab it here. Tell you the actual company name, and you can look it up on the internet. Um, I just. She just, oh, there we are. One stop visa. So, one stop visa on Soy Six. You know, where all the girly bars are. Mark and Pom have actually got an office. So, if you imagine you're coming from the second road, you walk into the Soy, and you've got all the screaming girls on the right hand side. I think it's it's almost down the bottom on the left. You'll see, you'll see it very clearly. Uh, and they're brilliant. They're really good. They don't rip you off. Mark's very polite. He's just been in hospital. He hurt his hip, but they're really good. Uh, Pom is uh, his wife she does all the running around she'll take you i mean i had to get a bank account open she took me to the bank herself um when i got my last visa done uh, they helped me with that and they're really really good i used to use somebody else um who weren't very very helpful when i needed to renew my visa i won't say anything more than that but when i first made a visa with them they were very very helpful the second time i wanted it it was almost like they were doing me a favor and i thought no no way uh, so one stop visa soy six very highly recommended um Jeremy, you have a nice fake Rolex. Uh, date just uh, date just forty one. Fluted basil. Uh, I don't even know enough about them, Jeremy. To um, oh, that's the wrong watch. I'm wearing it. Is that what you mean? The bit that sticks up there, the glass. Yeah, I don't like the fake Rolexes. You know, like they've got they're suppo supposedly diamonds, but they're little bits of glass on the inside, and they put all sparkly. They just look so ridiculously fake, don't they? When you get a, a simple one like that, they, um, I, I went to a, a fake Rolex shop in MBK the other day, and I showed him. I said, "Is that fake or real?" And he looked at it, and he really looked at it for a long time. And he said, "You know, what? I'd have to, you'd have to take it off because it's got the." But, but, and this is a, a guy who sells them. He couldn't tell the difference, right? Um, right. 20 Rothmans, how are you doing? Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure what that means. What does that mean? Right, I just don't know. I haven't got a clue. Jay Willie, hello. Good to catch you live. Hi, Jay Willie. Uh, being nearly two hours now. I'll give it another 10 minutes if I can, and then I'll call it a day. Super bro, are Farangs allowed to run for local government positions such as mayor? Would you ever consider doing such a thing? I can't imagine myself as a mayor. No, not really, because you, uh, you've you got to be a Thai citizen, and it's very, very high, high, hard to get a citizenship. They give out about 10, uh, about 100 a year. My friend Simon, uh, they've just opened it up now, uh, and my friend Simon's trying to get a Thai ID card. Uh, you've got to be able to speak very good Thai. You've got to have a Thai family, like children or a wife, uh, a wife and children, rather, and um, you've got to go for a very difficult test and if, if you get if you do get if you're one of the lucky ones who gets a, a real Thai ID you know it looks like a proper Thai ID then you can buy land like the Thais you can claim any kind of thing that a Thai can claim you can use the hospitals for free uh, the, the government hospitals so uh, there is a lot a lot of um, you know there's a lot of benefits from that but I, I, I won't even try to get one because I, I, my Thai is not good enough um, right let me just say thank you to Nathan the Bee Man, uh, thanks for reading out story and happy 40th to the handsome man. I wish it was 40th, it's 64. I was just turned 64, but thank you, Nathan. It's very kind of you. Uh, didn't expect a super chat, but um, very generous of you. Okay. Um, okay. So, Hobson's Choice, what, uh, what was the cost approximately of the Rolex copy from MBK? They vary, but they're not overly expensive, and they're really good copies. He just showed – I don't know enough about Rolexes, but there's one he showed me. It's a Daytona, I think it was called. Uh, that was about 4,000 baht. But this one – when you go there, he'll quote you three and a half, four thousand, 4,000 and up, right? If you say to the guy, look, I've got 2,500 or 2,000, I, I paid two – I paid two and a half thousand just because you're quite a nice guy and you showed me a lot of watches and I was making a video of the catalog. I think you can pick something like that up for about two – 
maximum two and a half thousand baht. I actually bought this one in Pat Pong, not in MBK Center. Um, I wish it would focus properly because you, it's just so nice. You know, you've got the, you know, you've got the marking on the side there. Is it showing? You know, on the on the actual thing there, the the, the Rolex mark, um, and and it's also got the um, the crown, as it were, one on the wrist strap there. The metal hasn't kind of gone coppery color. It's it's keeping the color. Uh, nice simple face. Perpetual hand there. Movement. I've got it around the wrong way, have I? You know. So yes, yeah, and it and it keeps really good time. The only annoying thing about it, and I have owned a real Rolex years ago. Uh, that's a long story how I lost it. But anyway, the only annoying thing about this one, if you have a real Rolex, because it's perpetual movement. So your movement, little pendulum or little wheel that goes around. That's what keeps a, the second hand turning if you leave it down for any length of time uh it stops because it's it has to be moving on your wrist and the only annoying thing about this one when i had a real rolex it would last for about i could leave it on the side for about two two and a half days put it on and it was still going with this every morning i have to set the time and start moving it because it, it only lasts about six hours seven hours and then there's no wind up left in it uh, hobson's choice re rats saw a motorbike taxi driver a few weeks ago who was cooking a rat on a grill by the roadside yeah i know they got to eat haven't they they don't make a lot of money those guys meat is meat i guess uh Right, T Toby, uh, the best business during Songkran is having a cell phone repair kit. I think I was going to go out and do any filming. Uh, I've got all sorts of cameras here. I think what I would do, I would you the only one that's totally waterproof is the GoPro. I've got the GoPro 10, um, but they are waterproof. You know, you can film underwater with them. I, I guess that's what YouTubers who are filming Songkran are using. Uh, is, that, is that what I said? One stop visa, Dutch Buddha. Um, is it still there? Yeah, one stop visa. That's it. What did I say? Yeah, it's one stop visa anyway. Yeah, soy six. Thank you. Did I pronounce it wrong? Um, yeah, how you doing? Right, Hobson's choice again. Look, uh, is there any issue getting a visa renewal in Pattaya? Although I live in Bangkok, I hear mixed views on this, and it's cheaper to do so. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't really. You know, immigration in Bangkok is a huge place. I know people who pay agents. I was actually shocked at one time because um, you're paying the agent to facilitate the visa, okay, whatever visa you're going for. You don't buy the visa, but they just, they'll get it for you. It would make it easier. You have to go to immigration and get your photograph taken, all the rest of it. Um, but somebody who comes out here and they want a retirement visa, they're generally going to pay about, they'll get a bank account. The first uh, retirement visa is 15 months so you get the bank account, you get the residence uh, letter to say where you live, and you'll get 15 months and all in. It's around 33,000 baht the first year. Then it drops to less than half price the second year. Um, but I, I, I know a guy who, who went to an agent in Bangkok and he paid 64,000 baht. And I was like, what? It's just, you know, in Patty, it just seems to be more geared up for it. You know, it's quicker, it's cheaper, it's easier to do. Um, me living here... I get everything done in Patty because it's just a lot easier. It's a lot cheaper and it's a lot quicker. Uh, you can get it done here. Of course you can. Uh, but I'm not, uh, um, I, I don't want to go to immigration here. I, I don't really know any agents well enough in Bangkok because I've never tried to um, do anything in Bangkok. So I don't really know any agents. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? I've never been introduced to an agent. I know, yep, this guy's good because uh, like I've just told you about one stop visa. Okay. Right. In, outside in, um, Oh, I'm I'm not 100% sure for insurance purposes. Is a real Rolex better? Get it certified for a fee, but no, it's a fake. Okay. Um, the problem, yeah, I'm really paranoid. You know, when I had my real Rolex in the UK years ago, um, you should insure them, shouldn't you, in case you get bur your house gets burgled and it gets robbed. But I, you know, I heard stories about like corrupt people in insurance companies telling you know teams who's got gold in the house who's got rolexes in so i always thought it was it was kind of safer just not to mention it to anybody you know i wouldn't wear a rolex in the uk now you probably get robbed um yeah do me a favor franco drop me a text on that one because uh, I'll, I'll i'll forget after the stream um J.O. Flowers, is it? Flanders. Coming over to Patty next week, having met two sisters without them knowing 
in my previous trip. I'm looking forward to a dramatic experience this trip. A story is making for your in the making for your channel. We'll just keep your hand on your wallet. Uh, outside in again. I've heard they're taking out 12-hour clocks in schools and moving to a digital because kids can't tell the time. That's terrible, isn't it? Right, sorry, dog. Uh, does one stop visa do tourist visa? My wife wants to come to the UK. Well, you, you, you're coming in late to the stream. I don't know how long it's going to take, but eventually she won't need a visa to go to, the, to Thailand for a, a trip because Lord Cameron, our, our, who was the Prime Minister, uh, David Cameron, was recently in Thailand and they've kind of done a deal that they will, uh, they're going to stop Thais having to apply for visas. So when we come here, we get 30 day stamp, right? And they're going to be able to do the same. Um, so your answer is, does, do they do, uh, it's quite, yeah, for, if, if for the UK, it's a lot easier than the States. I did a video with David from Thai Legal Protection and he said it's virtually impossible to take somebody to the States, a Thai girl, just for a visit. But the UK can still be done. Yeah, I'm sure they can help you with that. And if they can't, they'll put you on to Peter at Thai Legal who can help you with it. They're very, very good. You know, they don't rip you off. Or they don't give you any BS. If they can't do it, they'll they'll tell you. But I, I can't see any reason why they, they can't do it. Uh, Superbro, what is the green thing on those blue drawers behind you? The green thing on the blue drawers. It's a sticker. It's just uh, the shop sticker, which says... Uh, Big C, where I bought it from recently. Okay. Uh, uh, the real Benny Mac. Have you tried a watch winder? Very handy. I haven't. I haven't. Um, Hobson's Choice. Uh, nice copy star watch. The thing is, right, if you ever meet a foreigner here and you want him to think it is real, right, uh, and the first thing they'll say, because it's Thailand, someone will look at your watch and say, is that real? Uh, and the perfect answer you give to somebody, you'll say, do you know what? The problem with having a Rolex in Thailand is because they're so, fakes are everywhere. The problem with having a, a Rolex is that everybody assumes it's a fake. And normally you don't have to say anything more than that. Um, yeah, okay, it's a good point, right? They make watch storage boxes that shake your perpetual watch and keep it wound overnight. Uh, I haven't actually seen one of them, but I will tell you, I'm looking at this now. I think something's broken on it. No, it hasn't. Um, when you go to MBK Center, if you want to buy a fake Rolex watch, and it's not just Rolex, they do all the big brands, right? But for an extra 500 baht with Rolex, you get the what? Uh, the box. You know the green Rolex box with the gold lettering and the crown, and it looks exactly the same as the real one. Um, okay, right. Toby Price, you are supposed to do your marriage retirement visa at your local Im immigration office. Uh you're supposed to do your marriage, okay? All right. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to get into why I do mine down there because it's 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 personal. Um, but I, you are right. Right. URL uh, Droid Superbot. So this one stop visa is in Bangkok or in Pattaya? It's in Pattaya. Um, Hobbs's choice. Told to use local office through for Aruna. I just want to read you something. I'm going to go totally off topic now. I had a a, a viewer send me this, or he left a comment. And a lot of the guys who go into the bars, they don't really understand how Thai bar girls' brains work, how they think, how ruthless they can be. Now, I've often said, when I'm telling stories about bar girls, uh, a lot of them are very nice. You know, they're doing what they do because they haven't got a lot of opportunity in life, okay? But some of the hardcore bar girls can be really, really ruthless, okay? And I'm going to read this out. Uh, and now, this doesn't apply to every single bar girl. Of course, it doesn't. But I'm sure it applies to some bar girls, and, uh, you know, this guy sent this in, and I've got no reason to doubt it. So I'm going to read it out to you. It's very short, okay? Um, all the staff in bars talk about and respect Farangs about as much as sewer rats. There's more scammers in Thai bars than any other place on the planet. 98% of those customers have no idea what they say about foreigners. I speak Thai, Andy San, and my advice is if you want to keep going to bars having fun, don't learn the languages. They even laugh about their Farang sponsors committing suicide. It's disgusting, and I'm done with the bar scene. I'm not spending money in a greedy, racist, and ruthless environment. They're scammers throughout the world, but only over there they actually enjoy doing it. So I don't know if that's true or made up, but, you know, um, I don't know why the guy would go to the trouble of making it up, but if it is, it's, it's pretty ruthless, isn't it? I can't imagine, a, you know, some guy is sponsoring some girl he dies and uh, she they laugh about it it's, it's pretty ruthless isn't it uh max smith it's a tile a thylex yeah not a rolex a thylex okay 
uh soy dog is nick dean still going ahead with the film private dancer um i don't know i i don't really have a lot to do with patty a youtubers i have met nick dean a couple of times i've never been in his bar because i don't like the attention you know i've seen a lot of youtubers on it he does a live stream from his bar doesn't he and, I, and i've seen him interview various youtubers over the year i've been here uh, and I've been to Patrick and not even been in his bar because I just don't want the attention. You know, when I'm when I'm when I'm relaxing, I just want to sort of keep myself to myself, as it were, whoever I'm with. And uh, I did hear this thing about him involved in a film uh, the, based on the the book uh, by uh, Stephen. Uh, I can't remember his last name. Private Dancer, which I've read a couple of times, uh, which is based on true people actually and bars, which I know some of them, but he uses false names. Um, but in answer to your question, I, I don't really have any contact with Patia YouTubers. And the last time I met Nick Dean, I was sitting in a bar opposite Blackwoods. Nick Dean came up Soy 7. He said hello to Damon, who I was with. And Damon said, look, Peter's here. And I'd met him before. And he came into the bar and shook my hand and said hello to me. But other than that, I, I honestly don't know. Um, maybe Trevor would know. I don't know. He's down there, isn't he? Um, Hobbs's choice. That model looks more really realistic. Some are awful. What model is that, Hobbs? Oh, you mean the the Rolex? Yeah, yeah. It, it broke the first week I had it. The pin fell out of it. I had to get it fixed, but it was only a couple hundred baht. Right. Um, Super Bro, is that a perpetual fan behind you? High quality or a cheap knockoff? Yeah. Well, that fan. I, that's what I use when I'm work because I work here, obviously editing videos, and I don't keep the aircon on twenty four seven. It's on now because the fan's noisy. But if I was working now, I'd be sitting here without a shirt on, which isn't a pretty sight, and I'd have that fan on the go, and the aircon would be off. But I've, I've just shut everything. I put a shirt on, and the aircon's on. Okay. Toby Price, I think the guy is spot on. I can speak Thai, but only speak English in the bar uh, to, I think, lug in, is it? Uh, and then and Andrew Gerson says, I would I would bet money that is true. One thing about guys out here who speak very, very good Thai, and I wouldn't pretend and say I can speak very, very good Thai. People say to me, look, you've been going to Thailand for a long time. How come you don't speak Thai? Well, the simple answer to that is when I worked in the hotels, and a lot of the time I was working in hotels here, I was in Konken for two years, the management team we didn't hire the ties who couldn't speak any english so when i say the management uh, you'd have a coffee shop a bar uh, entertainment area the staff most of the staff didn't speak english but the guy the thai guy who was in charge of say the coffee shop he spoke thai and when we'd had our morning meetings we only dealt yeah we did walkthroughs and make sure everything was okay i was in food and beverage right so you'd, you'd do a walkthrough and you just check every all the food was hot and nice and presented and everything but we didn't really talk to this waitresses and waitresses not a snobbish thing we just dealt with the manager the, the like the, the restaurant manager so in the morning we'd have a meeting in the hotels and the heads of each department would come to that meeting we'd talk to them and they all spoke english and then they'd ferry uh, you know filter the information down to their staff in their particular uh, outlet and that's why my ties never been really uh fluent but i do speak quite a bit of time i know a lot of words uh, and i can speak uh fairly decently now but what i was going to say to you, a lot of the guys who speak absolutely fluent thai when they go into the bars you always think i remember years ago when i couldn't speak any thai when i first got here i always thought wouldn't it be fun to go into a bar in soy cowboy and just start talking in thai to the girls they'd be so surprised and it'd be such good fun right but it's actually not because what happens is um a lot of the guys who speak Thai here, when they go into the bars, they, they don't speak any Thai. They only speak English. And the reason for that is you go into a bar in Soy Cowboy or Nana or wherever, and the girl comes up to you and you start speaking to her in fluent Thai or understandable Thai, they'll just walk away. They don't want to know you because they know they're looking for suckers, right? People who don't who believe the lies and people who uh, don't know anything about Thailand. You know, they can tell you the stories about the, they've just started working the bar today. They've never been out with a... Uh, a customer you know they don't like thai guys all the bs that they normally tell okay but if you live here and you speak the language one they're thinking well he's probably got a thai wife and most of the time they're right and secondly they know you know the score you know you're not going to listen to any of them stories you're certainly not going to waste cash unnecessarily on them uh, and they don't want to know and that's the reason uh you know if i did speak fluent thai i'd go in it'd be nice to listen uh, i've been with guys who speak very very good time we've been sat there and there's been a girl talking to me or the guy I'm with who speaks Thai and another girl approaches the first girl and starts talking Thai 
And then she goes off, and I'll say to the guy who speaks Thai, what did she say? And the guy, the girl who came up to the girl who was trying to get the drink, the girl who came up said, has he bought you a drink yet? She says, no, but I'm working on it. And then that one walked off. So, you know, it could be fun to listen to, but I don't think you go in there and start speaking Thai, and a lot of the time they'll change dialect. The dialect, You know, you speak Thai, and they'll go on to the Isan kind of style, or uh, Lao, whatever it is. Uh, Toby. I think the guy's spot on. Oh, I've just read that, haven't I? Uh, thank you, the Pete Journal. Thank you for that. Uh, Super Bro, thanks for wearing a T-shirt, Peter. Much appreciated. Yeah, it's not, it's not a great sight, is it? Um, Soy Dog, it's true. My Australian friend died of a heart attack in Udung Thani. He was a bar girl sponsor. She just found another customer the next day. He wasn't bothered about his death. It's so brutal, isn't it, compared to, you know, in the West? Um, right, Perbit, is this going to be the last one today? Peter, does the term Farang only apply to white people or is it to anyone who isn't Thai? Do you know, that's a really good question, actually. Now, I might be wrong. I'm going to guess it. I I, get, I think it means all foreigners. Um, I, I've never really asked the question. It's a really good question. I should I should ask somebody, a Thai, when I'm, I know a lot, a lot of Thais, I should ask somebody. But just guessing, I would mean it, it means all foreigners. If somebody knows for sure, 100%, let us know. But it's a good question. Uh, Toby Price, 100% correct, Peter. It's fun to listen to their skullduggery. Uh, so I guess, I guess you're, um, you're uh, it is fun because I've been with guys who speak really good Thai. They've lived here a long time and I've gone into bars and I've understood bits and pieces, but not to the extent that they do. And some of the things that girls talk about in front of the guys who understand, it's quite comical. You know, I've been in bars where girls have been talking to each other uh, and they're actually speaking in Thai, assuming nobody speaks Thai like us. And they're saying things like, um, oh, tell him it's your birthday today. And the other one's like, oh, he don't look like he'll believe it. You know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, just tell him. And then he might get us both a drink. You know, and they, they just talk like you're not there, you know. Um, but again, as soon as the guy opened his mouth and said, well, I, you know, I said something in Thai, then they'd turn Scarpa, wouldn't they? Um, Hobson's Choice says, my girlfriend said she thinks it's all non-Thai people. Okay. Oh, so you're with her now, are you? All non-Thai people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, God knows what she thinks of this stream if she understands it. Uh, Li Liam Stevens, pretty sure Chinese, Japanese are not called foreigner by ties, probably just Westerners. Uh, well, Hobson's Choice girlfriend, look, you can read the, 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 the um, comment there, so I guess she knows. Um, Soy Dog would make a good YouTube channel going in bars, speaking Thai and telling people what they say to each other would be interesting. Do you know what? There's so many good videos you could do if you could go into bars and record. But the problem is, is the same old problem as it's always been for, since day one. And that is copyright issues because every bar has loud music, right? So you can either go in and film it and dub out the music, and then you lose the atmosphere. But if you were talking to a girl and you were listening to it, yeah, it'd be a great video, but you can't do it because you just can't, unless you, unless you put the video on another platform. But then what's the point if you're not, you know, you want to try and earn a little bit of money off it, don't you? Uh, okay, especially Westerners. Okay, so what she's saying, uh, his Thai girlfriend or wife is, it's all foreigners, but particularly uh, Westerners. Right. Bali... Bali, is it Bali stick night? Comes from the, okay, come, comes from the word for the first Westerners in Thailand, the French for rang set. Okay, that's getting quite detailed uh, answers now. Okay, I'm going to start a bit of an argument going here. Um, okay, we'll leave that subject there. Right, I think we're nearly there. We'll come to the end of the comments. I'll just see if anybody else wants to ask me anything. Toby Price says, Arabs are called Kek, not Farang. Israelis are called Kal Kek. I've never, I suppose, you know, uh, I've only ever heard the word Farang. That's the word that sticks out. Uh, I haven't heard anything else. I'm on this diet. I'm getting really hungry now. I don't know whether to have something to eat and then go for a swim an hour later. Or I, I told you I'd let you know how the diet was going. So, before I started the diet, you know, I went to the hospital, blood sugars are high and everything. Doctor said, try and lose some weight. Um, I was 108. I've been on the diet for about two weeks now. So I was 108. Uh, I dropped down to 104, four kilos in about two weeks. I, you know, it's water retention the first week. I know that. Uh, but it's a good sign anyway. Uh, I went off to Col Cement uh, last week. Uh, well, this week, actually. Um, did I go on a Sunday or a Monday? I think I went on the Monday. Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday in um, Rayon. 
and I tried to stick to the diet while I was away, but you know what? It's impossible. And uh, I thought, sorry, I'll just eat what I want. And I had a, I had a Burger King at one day, which I really enjoyed because I hadn't eaten anything like that for two weeks. I come back and weighed myself again, thinking oh, I'll put it all back on. But uh, thankfully, I went from, so I was 108, I went down to 104, come back and I was 104.85. So I'm hoping in the next two a day, by Monday, I should be back down to 104 again, then slowly, slowly. I'd like to get down to 90 kilos, but I will keep you guys, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. But right now, because I'm eating sensibly now, uh, I'm starving, okay? But I'm not going to snack, I'm not going to eat anything, I'm going to wait till dinner time, probably six o'clock, and then uh, I think I'm just going to have a can of tuna with chopped up onion and gherkin and a little bit of mayo, uh, and that's it for dinner tonight. Brutal, really brutal. Um, thank you, Andrew. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, soy dog, thank you for birthday wishes last week now. Um, Right, Toby says, uh, chicken kiev, mashed potatoes, and peas for dinner tonight. Lovely. All right, all right. Don't wind me up. Uh, what I do, I do a lot of batch cooking. So what I do, I bought a saucepan. It, literally, it's about a foot tall, and it's kind of, you know, really wide. And what I'll do, I'll make something like a, a, a Korean or Japanese curry. So basically, you put in all the vegetables you can think of uh, and some diced chicken and everything, and you put in some kind of uh, there's a special you get these cubes it's japanese curry it doesn't taste like indian curry and it's uh so you've got all the goodness in there it just gives it a bit of taste and thickens it up a bit and then i'll lay out a dozen plastic pots with lids and i bought a little mini chest freezer when i first come out here and uh, i just let them all cool down uh, uh, you know get a laid on just put individual portions in these uh tubs and let it all cool down and then i've got good healthy food when i, when I haven't got much time i can just stick it in the microwave um Okay, URL Droid Superbot. Frank is derived from Frank. Actually, person were let me put that up there. Uh, Frank, uh, Parisian word used in India as. Fr okay, I'm not going to read it all out. You read, you can read it yourselves. So no, no uh, reason to doubt that. Uh, Soy Dog says you're looking healthy, Peter. Am I? <laughs> Thank you. Probably because I've just been like a, a lobster in the sun there. You know. Um, I've certainly lost a bit of weight from when I first come out here because I, you know, as a YouTuber, you go back and you look at your old videos and see how you can improve yourself. And, you know, some of the old, I'm not talking about the videos I did five years ago. I'm talking about videos I did two years ago. I can see a lot more puffiness in my face. You know, I mean, I've certainly lost a little bit, well, quite a bit around the face. You know, I've still got a little bit of a very small belly now, but I can definitely notice it. Uh, now, that one I would be telling. Uh, I, I get people ask me that all the time. Uh, where do you get all the pictures for your, for your thumbnails? Now, the thing is, a lot of guys, and they soon learn you can't do it, a lot of guys just go on to Google, put, uh, put in Sexy Tiger or something like that, and they just download the pictures and use them on thumbnails, and you'll last about two minutes on YouTube because what will happen is you might get away with it for a month, six months. Somebody will recognize that picture, and you'll get a strike against your account, three strikes, and you lost your channel. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to tell you where I get my pictures because this video will get watched several thousand times. There might be other YouTubers who watch it. And at the end of the day, it's competition, isn't it? Because, you know, I now make money on YouTube and I want to continue making some money on YouTube. And, uh, you know, if I give away all my all my secrets, I, I, I what I'll tell you is I do buy licenses and I do buy uh, DVDs. There's still DVDs. I've still got a DVD uh, thing there. Uh, and I do, uh, I've got places i can get them where i won't have any problems but i'm not going to tell anybody where i get all my pictures from it's it's like two opposing football teams and one you know the manager of one team goes to the other uh team and says what's your game plan for today's game you just wouldn't they wouldn't tell you would they so uh, don't take it personally um <laughs> thank you i thought you were gonna i thought you're gonna say something very insulting there but uh, you can understand why can't you you, you just can't I've, I've said things before and uh, I've, I've regretted it right uh, Toby Price, if a Mexican called me gringo, I would not worry. A Thai calls me Farang, no problem. Absolutely. I have no problem whatsoever with Thais calling me Farang. They probably call me a lot more that I just don't understand. It's just a way of describing some somebody else, isn't it? I, I mean, in the UK, we describe other foreigners, which I can't kind of say here. It might be offensive, but we don't mean to be offensive. It's just something we grew up with and we just use it, you know. Um, okay, guys, look, it's two hours, 20 minutes. Not bad for an ad hoc stream. I think I'm going to uh, end uh pretty soon what are we now 10 to 5 here yeah i think i'll 
Um, I'll just read one or two more if they come in. Super Bowl. Some of your some of your thumbnail girls have large assets. Very nice. Yeah, I, I'm trying to use a lot more AI assets, uh, a lot more AI pictures now because they're easier to come by, aren't they? Um, when you're using genuine pictures, you either have to pay for them or no girls that will give you them. And uh, the AI ones you can just make up. I know they're not as good, but they you know they serve the purpose. Um, soy dog. Uh, uh, Puyoy, uh, Rotty Lady, half a million subscribers from chopping bananas, making a fortune from a streetcar. Yeah, fair play to her. I mentioned it before. You know, I'm a 64 year old guy who's sitting in his bedroom talking about Thailand, but you know, you've got a nice girl there who's doing, uh, you know, she started off getting up at five in the morning telling you about her family. She's got a lot of fans now. People go down there and film her. She, you know, they've, they've taken to her, haven't they? And she's, she's making a lot of money now, a hell of a lot of money. And uh, all I can say is good luck to her. Am I jealous? Of course I am. But you know, what no no resentment whatsoever uh there's, there's I've, I've seen probably half a dozen channels come up in the last two years that are doing gangbusters they're really doing well and uh, you know we all try to achieve the best we can i'm quite happy with my slow plod i've built up a you know a quite a nice number of viewers and subscribers now uh of course i'd love to have a half a million subscribers is it going to happen no i don't think it will uh, will i get to a hundred thousand maybe in another five years i'd i'd be over the moon i'd love to get that plaque from youtube uh but you know, good luck to her. That's all I can say. Um, okay, guys, look, thanks for joining me today. A big thank you to everybody who sent a, a super chat. It's always very well received. Uh, thank you to Chris and Frankel for the moderating in the background there. Uh, I'll be back at my normal time of 9 p.m. Uh, that's a week tomorrow for, for the live stream on the Sunday evening and then the members live stream at 10.45. Uh, whatever you're doing this weekend, have a great weekend. If you're in Thailand, uh, you're going to get wet if you go out, okay? Until Sunday, guys, thanks a lot, and uh, I'll catch up with you real, real soon.